Mayor, I'd like to call to order the work session meeting of the Elmwood Park Mayor and Council for December 7th, 2023 to order at 7 o'clock p.m. On roll call, we have Council Members Dennis. Here. Fasolo. Here. Golubek. Here. Pellegrin. Here. Sheridan. Here. Council President Balasiri. Here. Mayor Coletti. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Sinead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there you go. Now we're on the same page. Uh, we have an interesting night ahead of us here. Uh, we are going to be swearing in a new officer, which is always a great moment for us here in Elmwood Park. But first, we're going to ask our chaplain to bless this meeting. Please uh, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Whereas uh, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of the State of New Jersey require at the commencement of every meeting, a statement of compliance be read by the presiding officer. Now, therefore, be advised that the meeting requirements for this meeting have been met by publishing a special meeting notice in the record in Herald News and by posting such notice in the office of the borough clerk as well as in a public place within the municipal building. And also by notifying interested citizens. Said notice was posted and transmitted on January 6, 2023, and published on January 10, 2023. Mayor, for our action items, we have one standalone resolution. We have resolution R 443 23. And through you, Mayor, I will read this resolution by title only. Appoint police officer Danny Maganino. May I have a motion? On the resolution. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. First by Fasolo, second by Pellegrin. On roll call, we have Council Members Dennis. Yes. Fasolo? Yes. Golabek? Yes. Pellegrin? Yes. Sheridan? Yes. Council President Valasiri? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, I will ask for Officer Danny to come forward with his family to be sworn in by Mayor Coletti alongside Chief uh, Feligno and Police Commissioner. Uh, Councilman Fasolo. Mike, are we shrinking or do you think we're going to this side there? Solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support that I will support the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States of the United States and the Constitution and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey of the State of New Jersey that I will be our true faith that I'll be our true faith and allegiance and allegiance to the same to the same and to the governments established and to the government established in the United States in the United States. And this state, and this state, under the authority, under the authority of the people, of the people, and that I will faithfully, now faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly, perform, perform all the duties of the office of, all the duties of the office of police officer, police officer, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. According to my best ability, so help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Council comments, I'll start off with the Tanisha. Officer Danny, I cannot pronounce your last name, so I apologize. <laughs> I just want to congratulate you and thank you for choosing Amma Park as your home. I mean, joining a wonderful, supportive team here, and I wish you luck. I pray for your safety, and I just want nothing but the best for you. Congratulations. Mr. Fasolo, Councilman. Congratulations, Officer, uh, Officer Maganino and your family. I tried. <laughs> um, you come highly recommended. I wish you nothing but health, happiness here in Elmwood Park. You're joining a force that's second to none. Uh, they're truly a very integral part of our community. So I wish you nothing but uh, safety out there and uh, all happiness in all you do in life. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Golubek. Thank you, Mayor. Officer Maganino, all the best. Uh, congratulations on your appointment. Um, I hope you stay safe, have a successful and rewarding career here, and I just ask that you serve uh, our community with integrity every single day. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Terry Sheverton. Thank you, Mayor. Officer Danny, I'm not even going to attempt the last name. <laughs> I just want to say good luck, congratulations, um, make us proud, and be safe. Thank you. Councilwoman Lorraine Pellegrin. Yes, congratulations, Danny. Wishing you a safe and successful career here. Welcome to our team and welcome to our Elmwood Park family. Thank you. Last but not least, Council President Thank Sandy you, Ballesteri. Congratulations and welcome, Officer Maganino. Uh, I want to just say that you are joining a police force that I always say is second to none. I wish you much happiness here in your career. And God bless and stay safe always. Thank you, Councilwoman. Well, we uh, you are joining a great force. I'm pretty sure you know that by now. Uh, you look at your comrades there. Uh, they're all very respected. Uh, we have two different types of policing in this town that merge into one, and that is a police officer that's community-minded and also the benefit of having the safety of the public and also the officer. Uh, you have a chief here that is uh, second to none. Uh, he is demanding, but he's also, he's very humane, if I, I can use that phrase, uh, when he has to be. Uh, but uh, So you, you stay on your toes, young man. I, I know you're gonna do well and welcome to the force. This concludes our public portion of the work session. At this time, we're going to move back to the caucus room to conduct our regular work session meeting, and the public is welcome to join us. Yeah, I think we should. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna stay in the chambers if that's all right with the council uh, because of the crowd out there. I'm fine with it. All right, go, go get your okay. pocketbook. I'm just... Okay, then I'm, we'll pause right. the recording so we can okay. go get our stuff. Okay. Because we'll never fit <laughs> Mayor, I'd like to reestablish a quorum for the December 7th, 2023 work session of the Elmwood Park Mayor and Council. On roll call, we have Council Members Dennis. Here. Fasolo. Here. Golubek. Here. Pellegrin. Here. Sheridan. Here. Council President Valisiri. Here. Mayor Coletti. Here. We have reestablished a quorum. Thank you, Shanae. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to open this meeting, this work meeting to the public. 
I do want to say up front that we have some issues here tonight, and I'd like for everyone to be respectful to each other and civil. Anyone from the public here to speak on any matter whatsoever at this point? Please come forth. We will need your name and address. You won't, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, they won't have an opportunity to speak during, during our meeting. This would be the time, correct? That's correct, Mayor. At the second public. All right, Kenny, come on. Hey, turn the button on, Ken. How are you, Kenny? Good. Good? Good to yes. see you. How you doing? I came to tell you there's 20 lights out on Market Street. Are those lights you want to put in? And publishers came and they looked at them. They couldn't get them working. Oh, you saw them trying to fix yes. it? Okay. Yes. Well, if public service can't get them done, we're in trouble. Mike, right. Do we know what's going on with that, Mike? We sent the work order in two days ago. I guess they came out to evaluate it today, and they're on it. So we're waiting on them. But there's 20 of them. They're the only game in town. So I count them. There's 20. 20. Yeah, we counted them, too. We sent them a list with the poll numbers, mm -hmm. every single light, and they came out, and they're going to get back to it. Okay, and right. one, one is missing a glass to yet. We told them. Yeah. And another thing, Mayor, tomorrow you're going to wait the Christmas tree up? I'm sorry, Kenny, I didn't understand you. Tomorrow you're going to do the Christmas tree? We're lighting the Christmas tree tomorrow. I'm going to be there. You're coming? Yes. All right. I'm going to help you. Okay. Yes. With Mike, we got to get him into the uh, ceremony. I might be too late for that, Mayor, but I'll see what I can do. Okay. All right, Thank Kenny. you. All right, Kenny. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Oh, one more thing to report is a lady back, went in the parking lot, back into the car, in the one of your uh, fire cars that was in the parking lot, and hit it. I saw it. Okay. And nobody, no cops around. No cops around when you nope. need them, right? Right. Never. All right. What, when did that happen? Every Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Wednesday, did you report it to the desk? No, I didn't do nothing, but I just... Did. See something, say something. I know, but I just say to you, it's not that much damage the car. I looked at the car. Okay. But he, she had a little damage, but she didn't care. <laughs> did, she uh, hit, did she hit anything with the car? Yeah, yeah she hit your, your, one of your, your cars. She uh, hit one of the cars? Yes. We'll check into it. Oh. Yes. And that's where, in the parking lot here? Yes. I will get him. I will get it. I seen it. I know. I see things in front of my house. So I can see things in the parking lot. That's why the good about it. I'm in the parking lot. Did you notice what type of car it was? Yeah, it was a red, uh, like, um, a red, uh, um, one of those, uh, uh, Big, big truck, the, like, uh, you know, big van, like, like, big, USV, yeah, big van, USV, that's it. All right. On Wednesday, right? Yes, it happened Wednesday night, about 9 o'clock. All right, we'll take a All right. All right, Kenny, thank you. Yep. Sergeant Woods, you got that? Got it. Anyone else from the public here to speak? Yes. Mr. Mayor, just a clarity, will the public be able to speak at any other time at this meeting? No. This is it. This is it. No, it's not. At the end of the meeting. Wait, wait, wait. There's another public session at the end. At, there'll be a second public, yes. Okay, but while we're going through our agenda, no one could speak. Okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. At this point, then, if nobody else cares to speak, I will close the public portion. Okay, Mayor, first up on the agenda, we have a redevelopment request from CSG Law Firm uh, in reference to 99 Main Avenue. You can come forward. Right, well, good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be heard, Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Mike Plum. I'm with the law firm of CSG. We represent 99 Main LLC, 
That's a uh, property that our client, Pat Mazzano, holds the ta tax certificates to. Um, well, let's see. Let's see if we need to. Uh, uh, he's here uh, with his environmental consultant, Eric Schauer from Peak Environmental. Um, uh, I don't know how much background you have on the site. Uh, the property has not been used for about 40 years. It was contaminated by a prior owner, which is bankrupt. Uh, we're trying to get the property redeveloped. There's an opportunity for there to be some EDA funding by the way of tax uh, incentives uh, for an entity that redevelops the property. Um, all we're looking for right now is a letter of support from the municipality stating that you support redevelopment of the property. That will give us an opportunity to acquire some tax uh, credits, uh, which would then be used to offset some of the cleanup costs associated with the property. Now we understand that in the future there will be land use approvals required. We're not asking for land use approvals tonight. We're just asking for a simple letter that would say that the municipality supports the redevelopment of the property. Uh, that is, we're requesting that because by regulation, it is an element of the application process for the EDA funds. The, process, the property uh, is not a, a tenable redevelopment site without this incentive. Uh, so the uh, letter would simply allow us to move forward with our application for tax credits which would then allow us to take a property that has been unused for 40 years and make it a, a usable site again. And the use would be an approximately 6,000 square foot office space with a lay down area behind it. Um, and that's the proposed use, obviously. Uh, there's land use approvals that would be required in the future. So that's sort of the background and what we're requesting. And I guess if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And again, Eric is here if there's any technical questions. Mayor, if I may, uh, I'm just going to refresh the council's recollection on this matter. If you remember way back, uh, 99 Main Street was a <coughs> piece of property which was contaminated. It was purchased by a tax certificate. The individual at that time came to before the council requesting assistance in a sense that he was trying to clear the place up I'm realizing that there was approximately two and a half million dollars in liens by the Department of Environmental Protection I uh, in an effort to intervene and assist a potential landowner and avoid potentially lawsuits uh, in this matter, I requested the council to authorize me to attempt to negotiate with the DEP together with the applicant to negotiate the lien and to see what can be done to help them along. We worked on it for about almost a year and a half. Back and forth, several conferences with the team over at the DEP, I took special time off to take care of all that with assisting them participating in conferences correspondences back and forth a ton of email a ton of paperwork that was reviewed we have to argue and so forth so i was i believe in some in some part very instrumental in attempting to negotiate the lien which it happened the dp negotiated they worked out a deal which was very amenable to Mr. Mariano and the property owner now, putting the property back on a tax roll, which the DEP gave up their lien, but with the understanding that he was still contained, con continue to maintain the cleanup portion of it. Now this part is something other than, and that was resolved, which I'm, very happy about and I'm very happy that Mr. Maizano is now a good owner and is going to be paying taxes on this property which for 40 some more years there was no taxes being raised. Uh, now they're asking for some help which is a letter uh, authorizing or 
uh, or giving them the authority to apply for particular funding and tax waivers, which I am in the process of reviewing, and I'd be more than happy to continue to review it, and I don't see a problem with it. This, the letter of uh, support is a reasonable letter that they're requesting, and I think that would only build up the particular property and raise more tax revenue. Okay? So Mr. I just Graff, wanted to give you the background, and I'll yeah, you over. Thank you. Thank you uh, for bringing us up to date. Uh, the request, is it, is it, are they asking for the council to designate that for redevelopment? No. And to go through that procedure? No, Mayor. It's, it's, they are, that they, it's a letter which is given to the uh, Department for uh, Development in order to say we, that you are supportive of the development okay. of the property. Okay. You're not designating it. You're not doing anything. Okay. Okay. It's just a supportive letter. Okay. Does the council have any problem with that? I have a, I have a question, Mayor. Yes, please. So, sir, you're, you're, you're stating that you're, um, the, the, the property owner wants to redevelop it for a 6,000 square foot office type, like a commercial, uh, in, more of a commercial industrial type thing. Uh, it'd be a 6,000 square foot office space and then with a lay down area uh, for the balance of the property. Do you have any objection if the town's letter like has language that it's not endorsing this uh, for any kind of residential development at this time? Yeah, uh, no, we don't have any objection to that. We don't have any residential plans, but why don't we let uh, Pat speak to that? I just want to clarify, if I could, um, thank you for the clarification. Uh, the, the one thing I would say is that that, that two plus million dollar DEP lien um, goes away once we move forward. So we're still in this application area, and I only say that by way of if it falls apart, then it's there for the next guy if, if we can't yeah. make this but work. But you, you didn't answer the councilman's question. I, I said that I'm going to let Pat speak to that because I want to make sure that we give you the right answer. Okay. So. okay. Yes. My name is Pasquale Maisano, and uh, I purchased this uh, tax lien at a bid that was in this very room. Not, uh, not knowing, you know, what I was going to get into uh, because I couldn't get any information from the the. Uh, town clerk I proceeded with the and I became the low bidder on this particular tax lien so going forth we find out that uh, there is a, a, a two million two hundred thousand dollars in change of a lien on the property for work that the P did to clean up the area I understand that that there was a big uh, factory there years ago which uh, uh, I guess they produced uh, soaps, uh, liquid stuff, which uh, they put into a, a little swale that's behind the property. And uh, the DP went ahead and they cleaned it up uh, as much as they could. And then this came about with the tax sale. So. My plan is I dealt with the DP for about three years, ever since that tax lien, and we came to an agreement where I, I paid their fees, whatever they wanted, and um, uh, they, uh, uh, they required, I think, two years or three years of monitoring the monitoring wells, which are there now, which are, are, are pretty clean. I mean. My consultant from uh, Peak Development or from the Nova Group, they could tell you a little more about that. So they forgave the, uh, the lien that they had on the property and they required X amount of dollars to, uh, to spend to complete the final cleanup. It takes about two years to continue doing that. And uh, like I said, Mr. Eric Slausch, he could explain more about that. And my plan is to 
to build an office and a garage to uh, operate from uh, that particular property. Mr. Maizano, the, the question that was posed was, do you have any intentions of converting that property into residential? Not a residential, no. Thank you. Absolutely not. And uh, I have one question. You're still within that two-year window of cleanup, so you haven't received a, a no further action letter yet. Uh, it's uh, in reality, it's not cleanup. It's just monitoring the wells that are existing. Go ahead, sir. If I may, it's not a matter of cleanup. Uh, the the deal that was struck with the DEP was <coughs> that Mr. Mezano would be responsible in maintaining monitoring the property, which I was uh, involved with with regards to Garfield, which is the waterworks. That's what they're concerned with. And there was documentation that was provided to the DEP that the contamination has been less and less showing with the monitoring. So it was working out very well, where if Mr. Maizano continues to monitor for two years, they will waive any fees. So, so Sal, regarding the town, by us agreeing to uh, give, give them the nod for the redevelopment, we are not taking on any liability of, for this uh, property? None whatsoever, Mayor. Okay. And I would never, uh, I questions? will eventually get the finalization of their application to review uh, and I will make sure that the town is not in any way exposed to any kind of liability. Very good. Daniel, you had a question. I, I would just, I think our correspondence to whatever agency should be very clear about what we are supporting because, and I'm not doubting your intentions, but, you know, if the town sends a letter says we support the redevelopment of this property and someone buys the property, someone else buys the property in two years, and uh, our, let's say our COA situation is up and they want to put 200 units and they say you support the redevelopment. I, I just want to protect the town to a T because when this subject came up, with all due respect, sir, I was at the tax sale when you bought, you know, when you were the lowest bidder and we had like six or seven properties <clears throat> on there. This was the biggest one. I drove by it and there were like three signs that had like, you know, like you'll die if you enter. You know, and you, and you came to us and said, I had no idea what I was buying. So I, I just really want to be very clear about what the town is endorsing in our letter. I support something good there, something with taxes, but I don't want the town to, to, to put something generic and then regret it because we've had issues where we take people's good faith word, i.e. Markow, and then people do other things. So that's all I have to say. Okay. And just to add, if I, if I may respond to that. Sure. Just, just to add some uh, assurance, I guess, is, you know, what we're suggesting the letter would say is something to the tune of, you know, uh, we support the redevelopment for a 6,000 square foot office space with a lay down area for this particular property. And we understand that it will be subject to future land use approvals. Um, and so I think that covers both of your concerns. Okay. Any any uh, other questions by the council? <clears throat> no, Mayor. I support um, the the letter of support, and I also concur with uh, Councilman Golovec on the assurance that the town needs. Uh, and I also want to commend our borough attorney for his hard work in, in facilitating this, and and I wish you the best. Any other comments? Okay. Mayor, I yes, absolutely. Zone for office? Oh, yeah. Okay, because I, if it wasn't and it, I mean, it became a use variance and the council was recommending the office, I didn't answer much if it wasn't permitted use, that would be ugly. Well, so that's well, we, use we, that we, well, we do want to make sure that, uh, you know, if there are going to be land use approvals required in the future, we, we completely understand and we're not asking for any type of prejudicial decision now regarding those decisions, <coughs> right? Well, we, all we, need, we just need to get past this first hurdle. And we understand that land use decisions will occur in the future. And if they are, uh, if, if it requires a variance, um, 
you know, we'll go through the proper steps to try and get that variance. And we're not going to get any tax credits along the way unless we're re redeveloping the property. So this gives us the opportunity to move forward to the next steps. And I'll, I'll just say, we appreciate that this is a awkwardly drafted regulation because it requires at this stage a letter of support from you that will later require um, decisions, right? Other decisions are required in the future. But as for right now, it's simply a letter that says we support this. And the regulation, just so you understand, the regulation says that we have to send to the EDA a letter evidencing support for the project from the municipality. So we'll send that in. If we can cross this hurdle, then we'll deal with the land use approvals in the future. The letter is not prejudicial to those decisions. Uh, Matt? The only issue I was going after is that if this was not a permitted use and you had a D variance, a D1 variance uh, testimony, and you produce a letter that says the council endorses the offer's use. Can we do this, but Tom? If it's, a, if it's a permitted use, then it's, then it's Yeah, but, that's but it. it. Contingent on the permitted use. Yeah. Or, hmm. or to go a step further, include in the letter. This is, you know, not prejudicial to future land use decisions, right? We, That's fine. I'll let our, our attorney deal with that. But the, the use issue, just I just want to make sure we don't get uh, somewhere we don't need to be. Mayor, and just for the sake of the council being aware, I have been uh, in contact and speaking with Mr. Crespi, who was the actual attorney before, uh, and, and continues to be, unfortunately. He's, broke his leg or something that he couldn't be here least, or it's like and then we may have to shoot him because he broke his leg but that's all right one lawyer less is not a problem uh, basically mayor I have a, discussed with him wording with the letter the proposal I am going to before anything is done bring the letter a formality of the letter and that the letter will only only address the support of the application for their approval for development not in any way approving the development always subject to zoning requirement planning board review zoning board review everything that is necessary they have to still comply with it okay nothing is given away for free okay so council satisfied with that all right thank you gentlemen good luck Moving on to our second item, we have affordable housing. Back in evening? Okay, great. Uh, good evening, Dan Haubin, DMR Architects. Uh, we're the uh, borough's planner in a number of aspects, including, uh, as of earlier this year, affordable housing. Um, uh, I always like to try and start off my conversations about affordable housing with a little bit of background. I'm not going to go 40 years back, but I'm going to go maybe about, what is it, five years back now. 2018, the borough uh, entered into a court-approved settlement agreement with Fair Share Housing Center, uh, which established uh, the um, borough's affordable housing obligation according to the, uh, the uh, Fair Housing Act and the uh, regulations of the, uh, the moribund COA as have been preserved by the courts. Um, it laid out a number of uh, tasks that the borough has to uh, fulfill in order to uh, remain immune from builders' remedy lawsuits until July 1st in 2025. And uh, just as a reminder, a builders' remedy lawsuit is a, uh, a legal action that a uh, developer can take uh, to court where they say that the municipality is not meeting its affordable housing obligation and therefore court please uh, essentially uh, uh, negate the borough zoning as respects to uh, my property so that I can build a much larger uh, residential project than uh, the zoning would otherwise allow. Um, so uh, the borough has uh, adopted a affordable housing plan uh, last November, December of 2022. Uh, that plan was adopted by the planning board. 
um, and uh, we were brought in uh, earlier this year to finish up the other requirements of the affordable housing process so that we could continue to protect the borough uh, from these builders remedy lawsuits. Um, we, uh, uh, so you know, have until March, uh, end of March uh, 2024 to submit a number of documents to the court, uh, including some that I'm actually here tonight to discuss, uh, namely, uh, to start off the affordable housing uh, uh, rehabilitation and administration services that uh, you have a resolutions, uh, I guess before you either tonight or later this month uh, to adopt. And I'm here to explain what that actually uh, is. So um, there are uh, there, uh, programs that the borough has to, um, has to uh, oversee as part of its obligation, one of which is a rehabilitation program which offers um, funds from the borough's affordable housing trust fund to low and moderate income households to rehabilitate their housing units. The uh, borough, like virtually every town in Bergen County, is eligible to, uh, well, I guess the residents of the borough who are income qualified are eligible for a similar service from the county. However, the county service only uh, benefits um, homeowners, it doesn't benefit renters. And so what that means for uh, municipalities like Elmwood Park is that you have to have your own program, which is open to both rental households and homeowner households. Uh, realistically, uh, renter households rarely get the actual benefit of these programs because it has to be uh, initiated by the property owner. Um, and the, uh, the uh, I guess the security that a uh, uh, property owner has to put on the property is a lien of 10 years uh, in exchange for these funds. The lien makes sure that the particular unit that is benefited by this project is uh, can't be uh, re-rented or resold uh, at a market rate. It has to be re-rented or resold at a rate that is affordable to income qualified households. So you have to do a program of 32 units for that. And there's also a requirement to set aside a portion of your affordable housing trust fund for what's called affordability assistance. Uh, and what that is, is a extra measure to ensure that um, income qualified households that are uh, renting or purchasing affordable units uh, can uh, uh, more easily afford those units. So usually this is in the form of some kind of a security deposit uh, protection or a down payment assistance, uh, which many towns, including um, I believe what we're going to do in Elmwood Park, uh, treat as a revolving loan where at the uh, time that the household moves out of those units, they send the money back to the trust fund to be recirculated back to future households. So in order to administer these uh, programs, you have to appoint an administrative agent. This can't just be anybody. This has to be someone who has uh, gone through the proper training and is certified as an administrative agent. So uh, per the, uh, the resolution that I believe has been circulated to everybody, the borough is looking to appoint uh, community grants, planning and housing, cgp &H, as they're commonly called. They're very reputable. They're used in most of the towns that I work with. Um, and they would administer these units. They would make sure that the uh, money goes to the proper uh, households, the proper units. Uh, and what they will also do is, as new affordable housing units come online in the borough, uh, they will take on the responsibility for most of those units of making sure that, again, proper households are put in them, uh, that they are being charged the rents that are required by the state. Um, and uh, just ensuring that the municipality is complying with its affordable housing obligation. There's a few other resolutions that uh, we will uh, either uh, be sharing with you to adopt later this month or next month, um, depending on uh, how some things work out. One of which is uh, to adopt a spending plan. And that is something that I am preparing. And what that basically does is it tells the court we have X amount of dollars in our affordable housing trust fund. We anticipate based on some realistic expectations that we're going to get this amount of money. This is what we're going to spend it on to comply with our obligation. Um, and uh, so we just need a resolution from the council approving that spending plan, which will be circulated uh, within a couple of weeks, if not tomorrow. Uh, 
there has to be a resolution of intent to fund, and what that basically means is it's a resolution stating that if for some reason the spending plan does not anticipate ah the realities of how much money is coming in or out of that trust fund you will do what you need to fund the commitments that you have made, which in this case mean mostly funding your rehabilitation project or any projects that you might be choosing to fund with your affordable housing trust funds you also need a resolution to appoint a municipal housing liaison and that is essentially someone who is the designated person in the municipality to be on top of affordable housing matters remain in contact with the administrative agent and developers that is typically a clerk or administrator or administrator occasionally as a CFO but typically it's clerk or administrator and let me just make sure I'm not forgetting anything here sounds sounds like you're asking for everything including firstborn I'm sorry it sounds like you're asking for everything including the firstborn you could keep your firstborn I have one kid that's enough oh and then there's one more there's a resolution in the council endorsing the 2022 housing element and fair share plan that was apparently never adopted that just has to be done at this point let me ask you this in terms of the fair housing share our machine are we in place right now because there's some developments that are coming up and they're concerned about their fair share paying their fair share so through because of the settlement that you signed years ago you earlier this year had to adopt a an ordinance that states that any new project that creates five or more units has to set aside their proportion of those units for affordable housing so there are more units that are going to come online just by way of that I know that we're working with some of these redevelopers to also provide affordable housing just so that we are meeting the intent of that settlement but what otherwise based on the settlement agreement and your plan you are compliant you have a yes you have a prior round the prior round obligation which is what they refer to as the COA rules from 1987 to 1999 you have units that are that are meeting that and you conducted a process called a vacant land analysis for the third round which is basically the year 2000 to 2025 where we basically made the case to the court that the borough doesn't have any land to produce any large projects minus things that it might do through redevelopment which basically said the kind of it limited the borough's responsibilities to just rezoning and to the riverfront and river drive projects which one of those is constructed one of them is in the process so provided that all of the units that are in our settlement agreement continue to be legitimate which is part of the process that we actually have to prove to the court by March end of March you shouldn't have to do anything if for some reason the projects are problematic which we are still trying to make sure they're not you might have to come up with a remedy and that remedy would be soon to be discussed I guess as needed all right thank you do we have what he needs Sal are we prepared to Dan Howland. We've been really banging away at this thing to make sure that the borough is protected with regards to the situation. Finally, we have a scenario where everything is in place so that there is no issue. Okay. Well, gentlemen, let's get it done because we have some projects that are coming in, and I don't want us to be lagging 
to slow down that process with the developers? if i could have been done yesterday, i would have been done yesterday, i assure you. there's things that are other than these resolutions, which i think we just have to you know dot the i's, cross the t's they'll be those are should be adopted. if not your late december meeting early january other things were involved um unfortunately depend on the responsiveness of people outside of the borough and outside of the fair share housing center and the courts and the special master advising the courts um so um we are i'm i'm calling i'm emailing everybody but we're so but fingers crossed we'll be done with this before the end of march all right thank you we'll do what we could to, to support you thank you very much any right. questions by the council moving along Great. Okay, hey, moving on to item three, we have our CFO, Roy Rigatano, to discuss the budget. Good to see you at night, Roy. Try not tonight. You look better at night. <laughs> Good evening. So, I usually come in December to give you nothing but good news, but tonight I have some um, not so great news, but will be covered. This year's uh, budget, we're not gonna be able to uh, make the entire budget, which means that the transfers that you're gonna see come in the next two weeks are, uh, there's enough money to fund those transfers, but we're still gonna have a shortfall. That shortfall is because there was nothing that this council or myself could do. Um, we've been working on this for about a month now. I was hoping we would not have to do this um, resolution, which will be before you. Uh, it's being prepared by Steve Rogert and Wilcox, the administrator and myself. And what it is is basically a multitude of um, Disasters that literally happened financially. Uh, we had many, many, uh, without going into detail, and stop me uh, under HIPAA, but we had um, employees, officers that have been injured. Um, as a result, our workers' compensation um, had to be paid out to those people, literally active on the job. Our insurance premium, as you've been reading all along, has gone up. We've had assessments throughout the year. Um, we've had overtime, um, normal, but it was a little bit higher. We've had some situations in town that I guess the chief, you can do an executive session on those. Um, when you put it all together, um, the, the amount of money is gonna be around a million. However, we have had those reserves put in place in January before we did this budget this year, which you all know, you all know. Um, so that is not going to be detrimental to the 2024 budget. The reserves are there, the revenues are there. Um, so that's the good news. So going into 1-1-24, um, we'll be fine and we'll be picking up those pieces and moving forward. That's where we are. I never want to give you a resolution, Mayor, until I explain it. Yeah. So that will be coming in about two weeks. Yeah. No, that's not good news. Uh, but let me ask you something. What does that do to the projected taxes for, for 2024? We knew when I came here back in March, April, that there would be a tax increase. How much? We still don't know. We don't have final numbers, Mayor. But it will not be zero. Well, these are, this has always been my concern with this year, especially we didn't have that grant money coming in, and I was very concerned about a shortfall and taxes going up this year. Lo and behold, that's what it sounds like. There'll be an increase, but we did project that last year when we did this budget. Yeah, well, we got to do a better job. That's what I say. That's what I have. For Anybody you. have any comments? Roy, anything else okay. you want to say? Nope. Um, as soon as we finalize these numbers, there'll be a resolution before you. Um, it is a statute and law that I present that to you. Um, and from that point on, again, I'll leave it at this. We're in a very good financial position. 
we have the deficit, but we have the funds to fund that deficit come next year. So, so basically, you're talking about these funds. What is it, the reserve money we have? We have yes. We have, we have plenty of reserves in many of the accounts. Um, and when you, many years ago, nothing to do with you today, but we always had a rainy day fund. Yeah. We have that rainy day fund, Mayor. Yeah. Usually in, in November you transfer anyhow, correct? That's I do. And I have enough money to transfer the majority of those accounts. Okay. Um, the accounts which I'd rather go into executive because they do come under HIPAA. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So, it, so it was nothing to do with anyone on the dais, myself. These are um, very extenuating circumstances. Okay. We won't go into that. Either. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Yes, go. Yes. How helpful would that those kinds of funds be to the financial picture of the borough? Well, I can't count that high. They are that extreme good. Um, literally speaking, it will be public uh, record. Town next to you did a hundred million dollars on Route 17. That township is getting a million four this year. Absolutely. You, have, you answered that question because the planning board denied an application on the uh, corner of Route 46 and Molina Drive because of traffic situations. Now, the $400,000 that would be coming from that, that specific entity, it would be well appreciated, but at what expense to the town? So you can't bring this up here now and say that's what's causing a shortfall when we had a year ago enough time to prevent this just by tightening the belt. If I'm not mistaken, it was four extra cars on that corner in the peak hour. Just to clarify, there was no impact to traffic after two traffic studies. Yeah, but look, the, the planning Our traffic study and their traffic study came in saying there was no impact to traffic and they still shot it down. There was eight, seven members of the planning board who disagreed with that. So. What is the function of the planning board? It's another checks and balances to our government. I, 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 Mayor, my point is not, I didn't get into that part of it, whatever, because it's an ongoing thing. My only point is there is real money on the table that should be coming in every month, and it's not. Okay, well, it means that what you're saying has no bearing on anything because it never materialized. You're going on assumptions of money that's coming in that's going to offset the, the, expen the spending we're doing. That's what you're doing. You're spending money before we got it. Anything else, Roy? I have um, nothing. Um, Mayor, may I just say, some of the comments that Roy made are things that were beyond our control when he mentioned workers' compensation, insurance premiums, overtime, things like that. I don't think that the council could do anything for these expenses. So to say we didn't tighten the belt or we missed the ball on something might just... They be... should have been anticipated to a certain degree. I can understand if it goes over that anticipation, but there should have been some anticipation well, we there. can't anticipate workers' compensation claims going up. And well, how much did they go up? The million dollars? No. Well, we thought people talk about it in executive, but what, these what are they things go, that boy, are beyond what did they go our up? control. About $300,000, Mayor. Well, that's a big piece. It's huge. That's a big piece. And I'm going to say it again publicly. No one on this dais, it's or myself or the administrator, it's none of our fault that we have this deficit. Well, not listen. You take care of the numbers. We give you the numbers. I'm not. We're not blaming you for what's going on here. I'm just saying that you have in anticipate of not getting a grant like we had in the two previous years. I foresaw taxes going up next year, in, in 2024, and I, I've been preaching that from the day one. To, to this council, let's hold back on the reins a little here. This way we don't have to raise the taxes. And, this, this, and as far as I'm concerned, there's no reason why we should raise taxes when we have our, our tax base is being brought in as we speak. You have to, but which, what we have to do is, as the tax base broadens, then we spend and keep it at zero. That's been my philosophy from day one and it's never gonna change. 
and it works but when you get a 25 percent increase in insurance when it's a three and a four million dollar bill mayor that's why we have no, the no, issue I'm not, I'm it's not, a huge amount that you never experienced i never did i'm not arguing that i'm not arguing that uh, that that is like you said that's perfunctory that's it's something that right. happened out of our control but there's areas that we're not being a conservative in that could probably offset that a little bit. That's my point. Okay. Anything else? That's enough. Okay, yes. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See Moving along? Yes, now we have item four. We have the engineer's report, item 4A, the monthly status report. I'm going, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Thomas Lamanowitz from Alimo Engineering. Okay, thank you. I'm um, going to go through my report. Uh, I know there's a long agenda here, so I'll try to be uh, uh, efficient. Um, item number one is the CDBG Road Program. That work, that design work is underway for bid um, late winter or very early spring, so we get the good prices and get that uh, project completed as soon as possible. Um, tax map update is underway. I understand there was a, we had our first submission with that for the state to review and get back with more comments. Uh, item four is the uh, Elmer Drive Park. Um, that PAR did not um, find any, uh, I'll call them red flags. So we'll be providing a proposal for the January meeting for that park design. I'll just want to sit down uh, with the borough uh, and make sure we have the scope of work uh, nailed down. Uh, as you know, that the, the grant application was based upon a concept um, that I just, again, want to polish up a little bit before we start doing a uh, proposal. Um, number six, the road, borough road program is essentially complete. We've got some striping. We've got some punch list <laughs> items. Uh, there is a payment for that project on the agenda today. Uh, we had some issues with the contractor's numbers and making things work, and I, I did send uh, actually two versions already. Uh, unfortunately, there was one more typo found afterward. I didn't want to confuse things by adding a third. Uh, the corrected payment is a little bit less, literally a few hundred dollars less than what was in that original report, so you're not going to have an issue with the certification of funds for that payment, but I do have a new copy that I will give to the borough clerk. Um, with those new numbers and the uh, uh, accompanying paperwork. Next item is uh, number 10, which is uh, Mola Boulevard tap coordination. Uh, the trap, the tra tap coordination is for the lighting project from Phillip to Broadway. Uh, that project is being administered through GPI. Uh, we understand that the state sent the borough uh, an agreement that they needed signed. However, it doesn't seem to have made it to the uh, to the right hands, and uh, we've asked for a second copy to be sent. However, this time we we asked them to use the uh, UP, the UPS account so that we can track it because the DOT doesn't do that; uh, they just send it in the regular mail. Um, number 11, which is the Mola Boulevard lighting. That project is essentially is essentially complete. The only thing we're wor waiting for there is for PSC and G to actually put the wires and the lights in. Um, and that contractor uh, has agreed to do the side curb and sidewalk work across the street here at the end of Van Riper. Uh, he'll be starting that probably next week. Uh, next item is item number 13 which is the, uh, the traffic signal at River Road and River Drive. <clears throat> we did go to a meeting with the county on that. They proposed a roundabout. Um, we had our traffic people look at that and are, are not recommending that because the roundabout was very small um, and tractor trailer trucks uh, would literally have to ride across the, um, the raised island in the middle of the rotary trying to get around that, and we didn't feel that was appropriate, uh, particularly if you get into car carriers or, or, or construction trailers, the low boys, uh, it would cause issues with them hitting the, the island. 
and the island would also have to be plowed in the winter, which would cause another issue, and it just was too tight. So we're, we haven't gone much farther with that. I've asked for another meeting to, to move that forward. Tom, can, can we just get a, a signal light there? <laughs> that, no? that was the original intent, Mayor. Um, they, uh, the, the, the county came up with this roundabout kind of out of the blue. Um, there are places where it works. However, in order for it to work there, we'd probably have to purchase um, the property uh, of the restaurants to make the circle big enough to allow the type of traffic we expect to safely get around the circle. Is, okay, that's because of the different roads, the way they're merging at that corner there? Well, it's not so much that, Mayor. It's the fact that a tractor-trailer truck needs room. And the, the circle on this was so tight that the larger tractor-trailer trucks, which we would expect from the new warehouse, from uh, the Markal property, uh, to go around that circle, the trailer would almost be to the middle of the circle, just because as, a tra as the tractor makes its curve, the trailer actually obviously has a different radius, and it would be halfway across the island trying to make the turn. Okay. So you've got you've, you've got it's a raised island, so the trucks are going to be moving. It's just an awkward an awkward situation. Uh, as the trucks make that kind of turn, they're going to slow down because the, the, the trailer wants to tip. So it's going it, to it just uh, it was just found to be too tight uh, to do that. Um, next item is uh, the Municipal Marina Park Improvements, number 14. Um, we did submit the DEP permits. Uh, we're expecting preliminary comments. Once we get those, um, if there, as long as there are no major um, comments from the DEP, uh, we'll go ahead with a proposal to do the, no, I'm sorry, we already have the final design. We'll go ahead and get the, the bid documents started. I don't want to get too, too much in, into the bid, the bid documents until we know the DEP is not going to come back with something um, excessively expensive or, 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 or make, ask us to make a major change to satisfy their requirements. So I'm kind of holding back on that till we get the, a little better, <clears throat> more response from the DEP. Um, some of the other general items, we're dealing with uh, some issues with complaints on the Turnpike Authority. There's an issue of water and there was recently an issue of lighting that we're dealing with. Um, with respect to number 17, the railroad crossing removal, uh, a railroad crossing up around 449 Market, that crossing is going to be removed. The rails are going to come up. Um, I talked to the county about uh, supporting uh, in some way uh, the, the borough's request for the railroad to also uh, close in the gap of this curb and sidewalk. Uh, they, the county said that they were willing to give their support uh, in a, in a non-cost form because they reminded us that the sidewalk, even though it's a county road, the sidewalk is the borough's responsibility. Uh, so that's something else we're going to be pursuing. Those are all the new items on my report. Uh, I skipped through and just dealt with the new items. If there's anything else, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Uh I By the question. council. I have a question. Please. Um, we went past the turf project, and oh, last time we spoke about it, it was like we didn't have a date yet, and there was supposed to be some conversations about changes to the plans to fit the budget with the new contractor. Yes, um, I It says here I, that there was a meeting on the 4th. Do you know what those changes, or if any changes have been decided? Yes, I completely skipped over that. I'm sorry. That's the biggest thing I have on this report. Uh, the, we did have our pre-construction meeting. Um, Tuesday, I believe it was, and the contractor is starting to move his stuff in now. The, uh, the, the, the contractor did offer some suggestions of reducing the budget, and that is what was uh, negotiated with the borough. Uh, we went through their list of what we'll call value engineering items, um, and we agreed with some of them. We disagreed with others, but we also added some other uh, uh, cost-saving items. Uh, when all is said and done, at this point, we're actually lower uh, than the cost originally agreed to by the by the contractor between the contractor and the borough, we're actually I'm, I'm going to take a guess at about 100,000 less uh, because of how we move things around. So we do have a little more fluff in that. Um, 
we'll be expecting, we're expecting the results of the testing, the soil testing that the BERT, that the contractor's obligated to do. We're expecting that back in a couple of days, and depending on how that comes back, that'll tell us if we can then um, use the allotment that was set aside for soil disposal. So uh, you're gonna see action out there. Uh, there's some action out there now. They have some equipment they're moving in and some materials, but that will be moving along very shortly. You're gonna be seeing a lot of action out there until the weather closes in. Uh, the turf field is not uh, terribly weather uh, uh, dependent. <clears throat> Obviously, if we get a foot of snow, it's going to slow us down, but they can get into some pretty cool temperatures uh, before they have to stop work. Uh, so we should be able to get a good deal of, of that done, um, get that moving along uh, fairly well. Um, I would like to see a list of what the changes are just to compare what we've been looking at versus what the final project would be. And then my other question kind of says he does the anticipated completion date of April 1st. Um, I don't know if any contingencies were discussed. What if we go past that date? How do we address that with our, our sports programs and things like that? Was that part of the conversation? The, the, the contract documents actually have uh, a, a time frame on it, which I believe is the first week in March they're supposed to be complete. Oh, that's April. Right, again, they, they, there was some discussion on that. I had to go back after the meeting and, and talk about um, and let's review the documents but I believe it's, it's March. Uh, obviously, if we get into weather, that's gonna be extended, but um, Mr. Warren from the Recreation Department is, is, is involved, directly involved in all of this, and we are looking at scheduling and making sure that we're ahead as far as moving things around. Any other questions for Tom? Tom, real quick, I have uh, one item. Uh, I think going forward, when we pave roads, where the new pavement meets the old pavement after about a week or two we get fraying on the seams i think we should have included in the price for the the total job tarring of those seams well they should they shouldn't be coming up it should be tacked and when they do that joint so if there's stuff coming up um on the edges and i didn't do the last walk yet for them, right. I'll look for that because if it's coming up, then that's another issue. Yeah, but even though, yes, uh, they're knitting in the old with the new, you, it's still, you don't get a perfect, there's, there's some hills and deals and that causes for the fraying to occur. So if we made a standard procedure to tar those, those horizontal edges, mm -hmm. um, and what could the cost factor be? We, right. we spend a million dollars on paving, it could be, it's negligible, right? All right, I will, I'll look at, uh, do you have a particular location that you're seeing? No, there? I think I just standard procedure going forward. Okay, but is there something in the paving project that? Yes, yes, well, you, you will Stone Ave, you come on Stone Ave, you'll see that. Okay. But, and that should, that should be the same condition throughout the town. No, I agree, I just, if there was something particular, I want to look no, at it to make no, sure no, I know it. No, I, I, I okay. just think it's, it, it's a better, even though they tack the, they tack prior to paving, if you seal that edge with tar, that, that gives us some, that puts two, three years on that specific spot before we have to repave again. Okay, we can do that. And it's, the cost factor should be minimal. I agree. Anybody else have uh, any uh, questions for Tom? If not, Tom, thank you very much. Thank you. We won't see you, right? Uh, for the new year, right? No, we just have a work. Uh, uh, we just have one more regular meeting then. One public meeting, and then so you have a, a, a great holiday. Yes, and everyone also please have a safe and happy holiday, and uh, obviously we'll be around. So. Okay. Moving along. Yes, Mayor, we have item four B, current Talk estimate two. number two for the 2023 road program. Any questions or discussions? Okay. Moving on to correspondence, we have item 5A, Bergen County Utilities Authority public notice. Any questions or discussions? Okay, item 5B, Bergen County Utilities Authority solid waste amendment. They are adjusting the solid waste cost. Any questions or um, discussions? Okay, item 5C, we have proposed holiday schedule. 
Any questions or discussions? Okay. Item 5D, we have the proposed meeting schedule for 2024. Any questions or discussions? Moving on to resolutions, we have item 6A, resolution to redeem third party tax lien. Any questions or discussions? Item 6B, we have resolution to refund overpayment. Any questions or discussions? Okay. It's, it's, it's a lot that, that we're looking at here. So, and I don't know if you can answer this for me, Shanae. Um, one of them is for Markel. And yeah, it's over $100,000. So the question is, do we have to return this money or can it just be held and applied for the next payments as a credit? That I will have to check with the tax collector about. I'm not sure. Can we? Can you find out for us? Yes. It's, it's a significant amount compared okay. to, to other reimbursements that we've done. Okay, I'll hold off on that overpayment and um, pull it out. Okay, any other questions or discussions? Okay, moving on to item 6C, affordable housing rehabilitation services. Any questions or discussions? Item 6D, affordable housing administration services. Any questions or discussions? Item 6E, we have the towing applications, the ones that were approved. Any questions or discussions? Item 6F, we have items of revenue and appropriation. Any questions or discussions? Item 6G, we have handicapped parking request. Any questions or discussions? Item 6H, we have cannabis approval recommendation for culture craft cannabis. Any questions or discussions? Item 6I, we have cannabis approval recommendation for Treehouse Dispensary, LLC. Any questions or discussions? Item 6J, we have the Bergen County Utilities Authority Service Agreement. Any questions or discussions? Item 6K, we have the third quarter fire department stipend. Any questions or discussions? Okay. Item 6L, we have a vacation buyback. Any questions or discussions? Item 6M, we have the building department refund request. Any questions or discussions? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. So they apply for a permit and the company goes out and does the work. The homeowner cancels the contract, so we have to give them back the money, the work that they already completed? That I am not sure. I have to ask the construction official. It just kind of read that, you know, the, the homeowner um, canceled the contract, but if the service is already rendered, why are we giving a refund? Uh, I think no. it says prior to this work being performed. Uh, maybe I can answer that for you, Thank Councilwoman. You. Uh, the particular refund is that they yes. did file for a permit to do it. The owner changed their mind. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it, so they didn't do any work yet. They hadn't done any work yet. Okay. So that's why they're asking for the refund back. Thank you. Okay. Also, Shanae, real yeah. quick. Uh, for 6L, we usually get an amount on that. Um, I'm not sure that this time it wasn't included or I haven't received one yet. I can um, email it to you guys okay. before adding it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Then we have two items that were just added under resolutions. We have item 6N, an endorsement resolution. Any questions or discussions? Um, it's a property in Elmwood Park that is going, that is applying for a CDBG grant, and they're asking the borough 
basically for permission to apply for the grant. And the resolution is endorsing it. I'm told to say that's just a, a format for just a basis to get them to approve it. Okay. Formality. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or discussions? Okay. The other item added was item 60, fire department clothing allowance. Any questions or discussions? Yes, one is the stipend and then this one is the clothing allowance. Sorry. Okay. Moving on to departmental reports. We have item 7A, Recreation Advisory Board meeting minutes from September 18, 2023. Any questions or discussions? Okay. Item 7B, Library Board meeting minutes from October 16, 2023. Any questions or discussions? Item 7C, Monthly Court Report for October 2023 and November 2023. Any questions or discussions? Item 7D, Millennium Strategies Monthly Report through November 2023. Any questions or discussions? Item 7E, we have the Building Department Monthly Report from November 2023. Any questions or discussions? Moving on to applications, we have item 8A, American Le Legion, applying for an instant raffle to start in January 2022. 2024 through December 2024. Any questions or discussions? We have item 8B from the American Legion for a bingo to also be held from January 2024 through December 2024. Any questions or discussions? Okay, now we have item, moving on to item nine, discussion for the fire department. Mike, do you want to take the lead on this? Uh, yeah, I'm going to call up uh, Labor Attorney Art Tebow. Welcome, Artie. Eric, how are you? Good. <laughs> I know some of you have received uh, emails from the chief, uh, Chief Ligno, relative to an incident that occurred um, in the fire department in early November. The question for the council is, uh, does the council wanna hire or bring in an independent investigator to look at the incident, why it occurred, um, how to prevent it in the future, and how to avoid future liability to the borough? Um, the fire department purported to do an investigation, but from what we can tell, the investigation entailed a review of video um, and written statements. And while that may have been a good start to an investigation, you can't actually investigate a, an incident unless you actually talk to people and question people. Um, and that video uh, that is available and that was provided to you raises lots of questions that should have been asked to the driver of the fire truck. Um, and to the other members that were on that truck when it pulled out with another member of the fire department still standing uh, within the bay and near the truck. So, um, you know, I'm of the view that this needs to be looked at. Uh, you heard from uh, Roy Rigatano that your workers' comp bills have gone up. Had that firefighter been injured and unable to work in his um, private employment, you pick up the workers' comp for that. Um, he gets covered under your comp bill. Of, you also have liability for negligence uh, if there's a determination that the driver or someone else was negligent uh, and that exposes the borough uh, to liability. So I would suggest that you take a look at that, determine if you want someone else to come in and take a look at it um, over <laughs> what was done by um, the fire department itself. Questions, thoughts? In a nutshell, what, what are you saying? That um, procedures were violated here? or I'm not suggesting that procedures were violated. What I'm suggesting is that I don't think that there was a true investigation done here. You had uh, individuals who looked at a video and, and read a written statement and didn't ask a question. 
You know, when you look at the video and you ask the driver of the vehicle, how did this happen? What did you see? When did you see it? Right? What did you know and when did you know it? You know, that, that famous line there. Um, none of that was asked because it was just in a written statement. They just accepted that written statement evidently and then reached conclusions and the conclusions that were reached could never have been reached simply based on a written statement. Um, and you have those um, conclusions. And, and, and more importantly, it's like, well, what are you going to do in the future to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Right? What is the department going to do? What is the borough going to do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Um, you know, what kind of protocols, what kind of rules, uh, standard operating procedures are going to be put in place to make sure that, that this doesn't happen, that a fire truck that, you know, uh, pulls out of the, the uh, bay with a firefighter still standing in the bay? Right? What are you going to do? And there's no suggestion that they're going to do anything to prevent that. I believe the um, captains, they had a meeting and uh, they concluded that they didn't see anything there that was uh, at ordinary. Uh, yes, it was an incident leaving the, the subject behind, but uh, what is that fitting to this? Well, that, that was their, again, that was the investigation. They reviewed a video. They evidently took written statements from uh, people who were either already on the truck or in the bay and then reached a conclusion without asking questions. I mean, I look at that video, Mayor, and, and I could come up with 50 questions for the driver as how it's possible that you pull out of the, of the fire bay not ensuring that everyone that was in that bay is on that truck. Okay. I have a question. Is this the first time something like this has happened? To my knowledge. And how long have you've been with us as far as the fire department goes? Well, I've been labor counsel in the borough since 15 or 16. Okay. Yeah. Now, doesn't the fire department have their own protocol as far as when things happen? They have their, their own bylaws as to what they're supposed to do, but responsibility for fire protection rests with the borough. That means it rests with the council by, as a matter of law. You can have a volunteer fire company, but you are responsible for fire protection. Okay, and there was a video on this? There's a video. Okay, because I personally didn't see the video. Oh, it was, it was, it was, it was shared with you. I can't open it on my phone, yeah. so. Yeah, it was, it was shared with you via email. The, the chief of Ligno had sent it out there. If the council is satisfied, then say so and let's move on. Chief, what did the, did the insurance company review any of this? Yes, it was sent to our risk manager, this fire specialist, Ken Schultz. Uh, video and some of the emails he concluded that he felt that something you know was wrong it shouldn't have happened that way and that he suggested some policy reviews and uh, circulating some training materials yeah I uh, saw the video <clears throat> and I got to be uh, perfectly honest I didn't see anything that was planned or, or detrimental other than the moment which is and I, I know the firemen have a procedure for this and they, they work on it but you're still talking about anxiety there that has to be held back uh, keeping that in mind I once again I didn't see anything that should have brought this situation to this point in my opinion Can I say something? We received some emails of, about what can be done to be safer, as the chief was saying, from the GIF. And I certainly don't think it could hurt to sit down, you know, possibly with some fire members at the fire department and the GIF and the chief, the, the BA and the council and just see. Obviously, I don't think anything was done on purpose. Things accidents happen but i think if we have information that could possibly prevent it from happening again because you could you never know what can happen right i think it's it, it could be a learning experience for all of us and we can only you know be better for for hearing those policies that other municipalities have in place 
that could possibly teach us more and help us more. That's not saying anything was done wrong or anything like that. It's just saying that, you know, we got information that could make things possibly help us, you know, and, and I don't think that's a bad idea. The chief sent a lot of good information to us and I think we should be willing to at least all review it together and see if we can, you know, work together and just make things even safer than they already are. Um, not trying to point fingers at anybody, but I think things happen that could be a learning experience and we can do, we can, you know, learn from it and possibly, you know, prevent something from happening in the future. That's just my opinion. Anyone else care to come? So we got a written complaint on the, on this, right? Mm -hmm. So as an attorney, like, you know, what, 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 what should a borough do when they receive a written complaint about a, a specific incident that happened? So I, I don't disagree that the fire department in the first instance should have reviewed it. It's just that the investigation was only started, not completed, right? You, you don't do an investigation by looking at a video and then reaching conclusions without asking questions. You just can't. You know, I respectfully, Mayor, I disagree. I mean, you and I agree on many things, but I disagree. You can't just look at a, vehicle, uh, at a video and say, or and read a statement and say that's the end of it. Yeah. No, but what I meant by that, I didn't see anything that was egregious. Well, I, I saw the same video that you saw. I, I questioned how it was that the driver wouldn't know that there's somebody right next to that truck. Right. Oh, this one's working. Okay. <laughs> So I'm not an expert and I don't proclaim myself to be one. So I don't mind having an independent consultant kind of look at this and, and guide us properly. Um, I saw the video and I can see it both ways. I don't think anything's intentional, but then again, I don't know what's happening. I, this is not where my specialties come in. So I don't think it's a bad idea to have someone outside of the borough, outside of the situation to, to look at it. And it's kind of like, if I had an accident tomorrow, what did I do wrong? How can I prevent it? Don't do it again type thing. If we just need to use this as a learning tool um, to update our processes and procedures within the borough, I don't think that's a bad suggestion or a bad idea for us to pursue. Thank you. Sorry. Anyone else care to speak? I'll, I'll just I'll agree with the councilman. Uh, I can speak for myself. I think the rest of the council, the council's not interested in the politics of the fire department, who likes who, who doesn't like who, who has history with who. We have something in front of us. We have something, somebody that puts something in writing that they think it's a serious thing we need to look at. And we need to, we need to check the boxes and let whatever it is come into writing. No one's looking out to get anybody, but you know, we have a video of a, a vehicle leaving and someone almost getting hit by it. That's not something to gloss over. It's there, I mean, I saw it. Anyone else care to speak? Um, I, I also do agree with that because, I mean, obviously you have a complaint, we have a video. We, you know, we need more information. Or, you know, whoever investigates needs more information. So I, I'm for bringing in somebody and just look into it a little bit just to clear it, clear it up. Sure. Mayor, Mayor. Yeah, please, Mike. So if I may, um, I, I don't believe anything was done deliberate. I do, however, qu my, my questions are these. Was a policy violated by anyone involved, right? Driver, passenger, uh, firefighter in the, in, the, in the building. I don't, I'm not a firefighter. I don't know that firsthand. Was a policy violated by anyone or should there be a policy? Was there no policy violated because one doesn't exist? I feel this needs to be looked at in that vein from was there a policy violation or if not, should there be a policy? And this is simply to make us better as a borough and safer as a borough. That's the way I look at this and that's the way I think it should be, should be looked at. You know, Chief, I agree that we definitely need to improve because that can't happen again, no matter how it happened or, and again, I'm not saying anything happened intentionally, but. It just needs to improve so it doesn't happen again. All right, Council, how do you want to uh, move on this? Oh, I'm back on. Thank you, Shannon. 
<laughs> something happened. <laughs> um, I'm okay with someone reviewing our process procedures and the video and giving us um, their feedback on how we can be better as a borough and, and have better safety for our firefighters. Do we have already, we have somebody that can look into that? Uh, I'm sure we can, we can certainly find somebody to do that. Uh, uh, anybody else have uh, an idea other than what has just been brought to the table? I have, I have a question. I know, I don't know which microphone we're using. Yeah. Um, if we're going to hire somebody, I think we should hire somebody from outside. Well, that's what, yeah. Like literally outside. Okay. Already? Uh, yeah. We could do that's that? Fine. Of course. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so are we all in agreement with what uh, Tanisha has presented uh, us with? Okay. Moving along. Moving along there. <laughs> I get the stakes. I get to talk to you guys later. You, you need anything else from us, Art? Not right now. We're good. You're good. Okay. Thanks. So. Probably won't see you. Uh... No, we have an executive session. Yeah. Oh, you you have a thing in a second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving along. That concluded my portion of the meeting. I'm going to turn the meeting over to you. Okay. I believe we're not doing committee reports. I'm going to ask the uh, council to forego their uh, council reports uh, due to the length of the meeting tonight, and we still still have some uh, areas that we have to uh, go through. Uh, okay, with that said, if everybody's in agreement, I need a motion to open the floor to the public. Second. Anyone from the public here to speak? On any matter whatsoever, please come forth, give us your uh, name and your address, and uh, we'll take it from there. My name is Ken Pressler. <clears throat> I am, uh, live at 123 Hamilton Ave, and I'm the person that we're speaking about. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask what happened Tell me what happened. Anyone care to answer that? Maybe we should put the video on the screen if we're going to talk about it. I, I, like, I, I don't understand. Yeah, please put it on the screen. Artie, would you? You'll have the video. We don't have the video, Ken. Uh, I have the video. <clears throat> would you like to see it? Let's put it on the screen. Anybody on the dais not seen it? I've seen it. Has anybody not seen it? I have not seen it. Terry, because I don't get that on my phone. I have not seen it. I have permission to come up with it? One, one second, Andy. Okay, we're good, good to have uh, that shown? No problem. Okay, bring it up, please. All right, it'll take a minute, so let him keep going. All right, does anybody, well, anybody my, do a, a, a song or dance out there to kill some time while he's setting this uh, up? Let, let, let's get the video. I, I don't want to speak until we see exactly what's happened here because... Yeah. Ronnie, it's pretty quick, right? So we can move it down. Yeah, we'll I show it. I'm going to assume <laughs> Samsung.
Did you, see it? Did you see it, Lorraine? Yes. I okay. If you can move down here and give them the benefit of seeing it, and then uh, we can move on. No, this I think that we didn't see it. That's all that. Now, did you see it? We saw it. Was it Dwayne? It was Dwayne, right? I don't know. Yeah. All right, let's come over here. They saw it down there. You saw it? I think saw it in the attorney. All right. Okay, so the council has seen it. First question to the council is what happened? Tell me exactly what happened. Anyone care to address that? Mayor, what happened? What I saw? Yes. I saw an emergency situation, uh, a truck pulling out of. Uh, of the garage and I seen a, a person that was to the left of the truck originally and then I believe came to the right of the truck. Do I have that right? As the truck was pulling out uh, and the person didn't get on board. That's what I saw. Okay, but. No intent. No, no I didn't see any. Was, all right, there was, there was a letter sent or an email sent by the chief saying that this was a vendetta uh, because he's my son and Mr. Ken Pressler de has defamed my character for well over a year and is now taking his hatred towards me against my sons, specifically Sean, in this matter. Because of this gross negligence of Mr. Ken Pressler, the incident tonight my sons um, could have been harmed or possibly killed. There was no gross negligence. Gross negligence is a big word in my mind. How, do, how did I do gross negligence? Let me explain something. Ken, I think what we're saying is how can that be determined by a video? There, questions have to be answered. Not to place blame or single anyone out, but we received, the borough received a complaint. In order to protect the borough, we have to consult with the attorney. The attorney's recommendation is that gets looked into further because he feels the investigation that was done is incomplete. It's not meant to, nobody's on trial here or, or, or anything like that, but the borough has to uh, protect itself from future liability. That's all this is. Okay, you're taking I, it personally. I need, I need to be protected from future liability. The day I met with you, I asked for legal counsel or a GIF. But we don't provide you legal counsel in that set, in that setting. So, so what you're saying then is if a fire extinguisher falls off a truck, kills someone on the side of the road or in, in a car, you will not stand by the fire department or the, or the member. So, Chief, that's a different issue. How is that a different issue? I was driving a bro, I was driving a bro vehicle. I've been, a I've been a fireman in this town for 50 years. But that doesn't mean that you don't, that you have a bubble around you. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But for 50 years, I've seen hundreds of firemen left in the firehouse like that. But none of those were brought to our attention. What generated this was an email was sent saying that this person, who happens to be the fire chief, who we have to say has experience, feels something was done wrong. For us to just look the other way and say, maybe not, nothing was done, is, is irresponsible on the borough's part. Don't take this person I, I question, I question. Not, maybe the fault, some fault is on the person that walked in. I don't know, maybe they're supposed to hit a button to say they're here. 
I don't, we don't know this. I question why was the fire chief home for a reported work in house fire and he's watching videos? I don't know, maybe that will come out in the investigation. This is why yeah. the attorney said you can't base it on somebody's written statement and a video. These questions have to be asked to flush out what transpired. At my, at my expense. No, why your expense? What does it have to do with your expense? Since November 6th. So my you're saying because you're, this insults you, we can't look into it. It's not against you. It is against it brought, me. But we didn't, we didn't flush this out. It, was it, is, it, is, it is directed it against brought, me because it was brought to us. Mr. Bruce, Mr. Bruce, as you said to me that morning when I discussed this with you and the mayor, you said, Ken, this has nothing to do with the situation. It has to do with what's gone on in the past year. You said that yourself I to me. What? Well, now you're going to say you didn't say that? Mayor, you know what you're talking about the last year. I'm not involved with that drama. That's, that has nothing that, to do with it. No, that's, that's, that's what you said to me. It has and to the bottom line, if the mayor and council are, are satisfied, then they can say that on the record and we can move on. That's it. And no, it's nothing personal no, against you from anyone. It's, it's nothing to do with personalities. It's got to do with you said that that morning when I met with you. Mayor, you were in that same meeting. It's not fair. The chief is right. Bringing us into this when we were trying to settle this thing before brought to this this point. And I don't think any of that conversation should be brought out here uh, because it's irrelevant to, to what they're saying. They're, what the council is saying here, and I personally don't agree with it. Okay, but you got seven people, six people up here that agree with it. That. This should be, they should have an independent investigation to, to see procedurally, basically their goal is to see procedurally if this could be avoided in the future. But, and that's, that, that's, that's what we're facing here right now, Kenny. And I know it's not what you want to hear, but that is exactly what we're facing. You know, I feel that this town has become a little town in, in Mexico where we don't have laws, we don't follow what's being done. This is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I'll, I'll say I, I have more. To, Mayor, I have to make a comment. So this was said that this was, happens all the time, happens hundreds of times, right? And it happened November 6th. Okay. So all this is going on. We get to this point. Let's say we cut this conversation off right here. Let's say next week it happens again. Same situation. Someone shows up. They're behind the truck as you look at the mirrors, whatever. They end up there. And Again, one in a million, one in a million scenario. They, they slip as they're getting up into the truck and the truck starts moving and something happens that we don't want to happen, right? And then, you know, a, a lawsuit happens or, or, or worse and they come back to the borough and they see, that attorney sees that we had an identical situation a month ago. We discussed it and, and just did nothing. Like this is the world we live in, 2023. People put something into writing, it could have Zero validity, it could have 100% validity, it could have be somewhere in the middle, okay? And we have to like do something. We have to go through a process and have a report that we did something. Like that's just, that's the world we live in now. I, I, don't, I don't see how someone put something in writing, regardless of what the history is, and, and we're supposed to like just, 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 we feel it's okay. Like that's just not the re real world we live in today, whether it's government or business. It's just not the real, real, real world we live in anymore. I, so like, you know, I don't know what else to put to that. I mean, what what is so offensive? All, about all this is is a vendetta against me. This has nothing to do with the situation that happened. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the discussion with the mayor and the police chief did say that that day. I, you know, you know, how could someone sit down with you, have a man-to-man -man conversation, and then you come up to the podium a month later saying you said this at this meeting? That's just like mind blowing. I, I don't know how that happens. I didn't say it. They said it. Mr. Pressler, may I say something for a sec? Um, when I made the suggestion to have an outside counsel look at it, I, I kind of glossed over all of the um, accusations thrown in some of the emails that we received. I, I don't know the background of what's happening within the fire department. Um, I looked at procedural wise and in a video that was presented to us to say I can't determine what's happening in this video I don't want to come to a conclusion because I'm not educated enough to do that and that's not my specialty I've mentioned that so I just want you to know that for me I didn't take into account any uh, comments that were made any malicious statements that were made against you or anyone else in these emails I looked at it as 
we got a complaint and like you said, this may have happened many times before, but how do we prevent it from going forward? And that's something we can do to change our processes and procedures. And I don't think that that's not an attack against you. And I just wanted you to know that because regardless of what's happening, and I'm not privy to know what's going on, uh, personally amongst some of the comments that you have read out to us, I looked at it as um, an incident occurred and how do we prevent it from happening to someone else going forward and nothing about some of the accusations that were made. And I just wanted to make that clear to you that it's not anything personal. I, I'm going to make a comment here. There's probably not one firehouse in the United States of America that this hasn't happened. This, this is common. You know, when, when you get a report of a working house fire, every second that it takes us to get there is a big deal. How do we know there's not kids sitting up on the second floor and they can't be rescued? You know, I mean, we, we always try to get everybody onto the truck. We, we always, because our manpower is low, we attempt to bring everybody on the truck. This situation, the gentleman went on the other side of the truck, went behind the truck. I didn't even know he was in the firehouse. All right, and now I'm getting crucified for this. This, this is ridiculous. And, and now we're going to get into big investigations. And in the meantime, since November 6th, my life has been destroyed. Destroyed. And, and no one seems to care about that. You know, I was here this past Sunday when the town or the, the EPIC committee gave me another award from, from the town. My wife was sitting in the front uh, seats here crying. This is what you want? This is what you get to be a volunteer in this town? 50 years and this is what I get? Thank you. Anyone else care to speak on the matter? Any matter, as a matter of fact. Go ahead, Ronnie. Any matter. My name is Ron Pressler. P press the button, uh, Ronnie. There you go. My name is Ron Pressler, 6 Second Street. I've been a fireman here 55 years, five years longer than my brother. I don't want to tell you how many times I've missed the engine as I'm in the firehouse and the engine pulls out, especially for a working fire. Like Ken just said, every minute counts, God forbid there's somebody trapped in air. We were lucky that night. The assistant chief got there and there was candles in a window. He, he returned the engine, they were only two blocks away, they came back, and Rob Bruce's son was in a firehouse laughing. Ha ha, I missed the engine. That's dangerous. And, and at, at the next day, oh, the primal vent hit him. The primal vent is a tube like this, corrugated tube that connects to the, connects to the exhaust. I could stand there all day with this vent hitting me. Nothing would ever happen to me. And to turn around and say he was in danger, I disagree 100%. And like Kent alluded to, this isn't about his, the chief's son getting hurt. It's a vendetta against my brother. There'll be other people here getting up the vendetta against Tyler Lewinsky. And at the end of this statement, you'll hear about the vendetta against me. Because I've been afraid to come to you, Mike, and let you know what's going on about me. And, and I'm glad you have what she announced before about the stipend for the third quarter. We'll get into that in a minute. The chief in this fire department doesn't care about the safety in this town. If he was worried about the safety of this town, he'd have been all year coming to you and saying, we have a problem with manpower during the day. And even at night sometimes. But let's suspend the man who works for the town because the chief took offense of how he wanted him to act on a member of another company. And that's what, where all of this is coming from. Tyler Lewinsky, 
the gentle that what, what started all of this excuse me bull is a gentleman from number twos a young gentleman not even 21 years old decided to send somebody an email and excuse my language that Tyler Lewinsky's a jerk off Steve Kochek's a jerk off that's the captain and lieutenant and the rest of the company is a bunch of jerk offs Tyler put it out to all our members here's what's being said by another member of another company which is all against our policies all against them then the chief gave it to Tyler to go straighten it out the assistant chief didn't like that because Tyler kept on him finally after a month Tyler goes the proper way we have a a board that is supposed to handle our problems he, he goes to the secretary to let the, the, the president know that there's a problem. All of a sudden, it gets squashed. Oh, yeah, the assistant chief talked to this guy. Gave him a two-week suspension. You know, no disciplinary board. Just take care of that problem. Make it go away. But I'm going after Tyler. And as all you all should know, this gentleman that you're paying every day to go to work down at DPW, you can't go to fires during the day. If you're going to suspend somebody, any kind of disciplinary, let him at least go to fires during the day so you get a good day's pay out of him. No, let Tyler stay down in the yard and do whatever else he's doing, and you can have a working fire here. You people don't care. Oh, Tyler's on suspension. Only over words, not safety. At least let him go to fires during the day. But you don't think that we need firemen during the day. Then Ken was sus not suspended, couldn't drive for a week. So that's two less people. Last year, you had a gentleman. He was a lieutenant in company number three. He happens to be a paid fireman in Clifton. They had, at just about this time of the year, he had a uh, a tour party and he had a little too much to drink he called the chief the next day and said just so you know I got pulled over for a DWI you're you're suspended it took months for it to go to trial he ended up getting three months driver's license suspension he Excuse me? Interlock device, the breathalyzer. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Thanks for the, I don't want to say anything wrong. Three months, he lost his driving privileges. He was suspended or couldn't go to fires for 11 months. A volunteer organization. We don't need people. But now, according to the chief, it was you. At least that's what he kept telling us in our company, because I kept questioning him. The lawyer said, don't let him come back till October 11th. I mean, he's been driving for months. We need these people. But that's what goes on. Right now, you have a gentleman that's trying to join the fire department. His name happens to be Carl Roberts. He's trying to join number threes for what, Captain, the last three months? The last three months. Well, I don't think anybody here knows. Nikki, are you here, Nick? No, All right. The gentleman's uh, property has some debris on it, and there's, I don't know what kind of. I'll hand it over to the chief. What, what kind of. Uh, he has something against him because of a dirty yard. A violation. A violation. He can't join the fire department because he's got a yard violation for being dirty. Yeah. Per our chief. Mike, do you know, is that a true statement? I don't know. This, I mean, we, talk we talked about it in public. We did that in public. We should have fired him because they had 
A yard violation. He can't join. I mean, does that does that make sense to anybody? We the whole council discussed this. We the whole mayor and council discussed this publicly in a meeting, and there was no no. Um, everyone was on the same page. I, there's there's a couple more facts that you're missing. I'll leave it at that. about. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So Ron, All yeah. right now, now, now it's me. Okay, Ron, like I started. I, I, like, hold on, let me say something. We have a ten-minute limit, but we're going to let you go on. All right, but thank please, you. I'm please sorry. get to a conclusion. Real quick. Now it's about me. Right. I was I was afraid to come to you, Mike, because of the repercussions that would happen afterwards if you would to say, tell this gentleman or anybody else here of what I'm bringing up tonight, and I hope it doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. The stipend program, he's keeping me out of the stipend program. And if you would look at the third quarter stipend program, my name is not on it. But every month, the, either the captain or the lieutenant puts my name in, even though I'm, I'm not getting any money, but it should be recorded every time I go to a fire and, and to a drill or anything else. It's not being recorded by the chief, but the, our company officers submit it every month. That, that should take issue with the... So, I, I have all the paperwork here, Mike. I give it to you so you can have it all. This way you don't have to look back at the last two... The, the, the agenda is for the first quarter and second quarter stipend. I was getting it all last year, or the, just the credits. I'm not looking for the money. Can we but look into that? All of a sudden, my Mike? name is not on the yeah. list. All right, Ronnie, so, we'll... so again, who's he after? He's after certain people in our department, in our company. Thank you. I don't mean to sound harsh, but. Yeah, of course. Should be able to get your point across over in, in 10 minutes. Yep. My name is Justin Lewinsky from 85 Found with that. Dear Mayor and Council, the members of the Elmo Park Volunteer Fire Company 1 are writing this letter to bring to, an, bring to your attention a matter of significant concern regarding the current state of morale within our fire company. Unfortunately, for the past three months, we have been without a captain, Captain Tyler Lewinsky, someone who is known in our company as a true leader. Captain Lewinsky has been a dedicated member of Fire Company 1 for over 13 years and has demonstrated commitment and expertise in ensuring the safety of our community. Captain Lewinsky is known as a first one in, last one out type of fireman, one that will put himself in harm's way to protect not only civilians, but also fellow firefighters. Captain Lewinsky has proved this time and time again, most recently at an ice rescue on the Passaic River involving a civilian, her child, and the police chief. I would also like to remind you of a rescue he made at the red carpet and motel where he removed an occupant from a second story window during the fire. Placing such a decorated officer on an administrative leave for, in our opinion, a petty offense at best, jeopardizes the efficiency of our firefighting operations and puts not only firefighters, but members of the community at risk of injury and, God forbid, death. Unfortunately, Captain Lewinsky was placed on an administrative leave, a term that is not in our borough ordinance, fire department bylaws, borough of Elmwood Park employee handbooks and the standard operating guidelines of the Elmwood Park Fire Department. Three months ago by Assistant Chief Ed Majeski, preventing him from responding to fire incidents, training drills, and meetings. He was placed on administrative leave regarding an incident in which he stood up for the men and women of his fire company when a brother firefighter from another Elmwood Park Fire Company attempted to persuade a potential member, potential new member, to have second thoughts about joining Fire Company 1 with a text message through Snapchat. The contents of the, mem the, contents of the message described the current, fire the current members of Company 1 as jerk-offs, who were trying to, quote unquote, trying to screw the, the fire department. And further, going on to call Tyler and Steve K the biggest ones, talking about Tyler Lewinsky and Steve Kocek. We guess when someone goes against the nepotism and the thoughts of the current administration and fights for what they believe is right, they have the privilege of being called that name. In our opinion, we wouldn't want anyone else representing our company but the two JOs, Tyler Lewinsky and Steve Kocek, two people who defend their men and women and their own fire company from, 
unfair treatment. We would like to expand on the Captain Lewinsky administrative leave incident. He was originally placed on fire medic leave by Assistant Chief Edward Majeski on September 10, 2023, preventing him from attending fire incidents, training drills, and meetings until a fire board hearing was set up. We would like to once again state there is no such thing as fire medic leave in our borough ordinance, fire department bylaws, employee handbook, or standard operating guidelines of the Emerald Park Fire Department. On that date, Captain Lewinsky was not informed of his charges, and when he asked, he was told it was for his actions, and it, and it was said to him, you know what you did. Captain Lewinsky questioned Chief Majeski if and when he would be having a disciplinary board hearing, which is a required action in our fire department bylaws once a suspension is enacted and is the past president for any firefighters being investigated, more specifically captains. He was denied and was advised that the fire board will be the jurisdiction for the specific trial. It is our understanding that according to past practice, the fire board is there for a member's appeal and not their initial trial. I should also bring to light this interaction occurred a day after Captain Lewinsky filed disciplinary charges with the fire, de fire department disciplinary board against Assistant Chief Eddie Majeski and that firefighter from Engine 2 that called Engine 1 members jerk offs for lack of action on the matter and conduct on becoming. It should be noted that both investigations were rejected, not by the fire department disciplinary board, but by Chief Rob Bruce, who has no jurisdiction on that matter. We refer you to our, to our fire department bylaws, Article 8, Section 4, where it quotes, all applications must be heard within 45 days of filing, end quote. In this case, the charges were intercepted by the chief and discarded. It is a shame that all members are expected to follow the bylaws and ordinances, but others can do as they please. It seems that retaliation and mistreatment are not, are not unfamiliar to Tyler. Tyler was elected to be the battalion chief at a fire company one in 2023. He won the election at the November 2022 fire company one meeting, 10 votes for him, three votes for Rob Bruce. The bylaws state that only one chief can come out of each company. However, at the December department meeting, Chief Roos ran once again as head chief for a third year. Even though the ordinance read at the time, no one shall be permitted to serve in any office for more than two consecutive one-year terms unless there is no other candidate from a company who meets all the requirements for said office. Tyler met the requirements for the office of chief. But Chief Bruce advised membership that multiple members of the council said it was fine that we break the ordinance, and he also produced a letter that had members of the council supporting him. Captain Lewinsky was then nominated as the fourth chief behind Assistant Chief Majeski, Battalion Chief Thompson, and Head Chief Rob Bruce. But he was not allowed to fill that position because we would be breaking ordinance. These special rules made the department president, Mike, the president, Mike Pressler, treasurer of the, of the fire department, Ken Pressler, incoming cap, captain of Company 1, Steve Kojak, and incoming lieutenant of Company 1, Justin Lewinsky, all stepped down from their positions because they did not want to be associated with the decisions being made and the questionable actions by the department and the borough. It saddens the membership of Fire Company 1 that members of the council agreed to support Chief Bruce, who was openly violating a town ordinance. Following the rules is what has kept this volunteer organization running for over 100 years. We also want to speak about that incident that we talked about with Ken Bressler, where Chief Bruce... Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. 10 minutes is up. Plus, so if you can condense yeah, it... In uh, I got half a page. Half a page finished. Please finish. In that incident, Chief Bruce sent a vicious email regarding a member who has served for over 50 years, ex-Chief Ken Pressler, accusing him of having a personal vendetta against him and taking it out on his son at an incident at the firehouse. Just a side note, in Ken's investigation, four people were on the investigation committee, which we feel is fair and just, but with Tyler, only one person was investigating the matter that he brought to light, and the, that same investigator was alleged was investigating the alleged violations against him. Regardless, it is a shame that a dedicated member with over 50 years of experience, who is not only well respected, not only in Elmwood Park, but throughout the state of New Jersey, is having his motives questioned and must answer to accusations after responding to a fire incident. Ex-Chief Pressler's experience and expertise in and out of the firehouse is a critical part of the day-to-day -day operations of not only Company 1, but the entire Elmwood Park Fire Department. His 50 years of experience can never be replaced and is needed now more than ever, especially due to the current lack of morale, manpower, and leadership.
These incidents have put fear into the membership of Company 1 and the rest of the Elmwood Park Fire Department. We find it difficult to do our jobs without fear of retaliation for not only for not being on the yes train with the current leadership. We're requesting that the, the mayor and council conduct a thorough investigation into these incidents to ensure a due process was and is being followed. Furthermore, we question how the mayor and council can support the actions of one person when he seems to be the common denominator for all the incidents mentioned. Your transparency will help build the morale of the Fire Company 1 and the Elmwood Park Fire Department, which will help us serve the Elmwood Park community effectively because in, in the end, we feel the life and safety of our residents is paramount. Thank you for your time. Can I, I just have one question, one simple, simple question, right? So you just demanded a thorough investigation into all the things you mentioned. Yes. Great. Perfect. No problem. But someone else demanded a thorough investigation into something that was very important to them. And the response was, but we don't agree that there should be one. Am I following this correctly? That was my response. I, I'm, well, I'm making a general point. I'm making a general point for the room to understand, right? People say things, things are wrong. I feel something's wrong, something should be investigated. They bring it to us, whether writing or in person. Our job is to investigate or do whatever we need to do to cover that part. I'm just making a bigger point. Okay. Thank you. Name and address, please. Uh, Michael Cologne, 205 Orchard Street, corner Orchard and Boulevard. I'm sure you Welcome. I'm there. I just want to say, uh, I moved here in 2006. I know the Pressler is very good. I live right next door to their father when he was there. I know Tyler Lewinsky. I'm currently a fire chief at a Garfield. 14 years as a fire chief, 25 years. Dan, you know me, okay? If you actually look at the video and you could have brought it up, why did not that person, why didn't he get in on the left side of the truck? Why did he walk around where the Plymo vent was actually blocking him? I drive a truck. I drive a truck. We back in so the driver's side so you see everything. So the firefighter, hold on, Dan. I got you. The firefighter, the gear rack is on that side, correct? Okay, so why didn't he grab his gear and get on that side? Second of all, before you even say anything, yeah. just let me speak, there was a working house fire. Did he have his gear on? Did you bring up the video? Did he have his gear on? This is why there has to be an investigation. We I'm, don't do this, this for a living. I'm just right. I'm, right. And maybe, maybe the firefighter was to blame in some I'm regard. Not, I'm not saying that's I'm why an investigation has to be done. I'm trying to make you're proving you guys the understand something. Okay, you don't need a lawyer to come out and and call the GIF guy, have a guy come over, go through the whole thing. But in in the meantime, I pay taxes in this town. We have a guy that didn't drive. We have another member that's suspended. Okay? Now, we're low on manpower. Listen, everybody's low on manpower. Okay? All towns, all volunteers. You don't come out at night. None of you guys come out at night. And it's, it's not something I'm saying, like, intentionally. Okay? So when you're sleeping in the bed, nice and warm, these guys get out, I get out. I come mutual aid here and everything. Okay? You're not getting members. They're not banging on the door. And I can tell you, we just did a recruitment in Garfield. We got three people that signed and didn't go to no firehouses. Okay? Did anybody ever do a, do a, um, like find out what it would cost to do a paid fire department here? How much? Seven, eight million? You just heard what Roy said, right? So with seven, eight million dollars, that's my taxes are gonna go up. So whoever else lives in this town, your taxes are gonna go up. Seven, eight million dollars every year. Okay, thank you. So I, I just, I just wanna, just about recruitment and, and our actions, you know, let's, let's put all this to the side. The mayor and council's actions in the last year, let's say, have been as, as I hope, pro-recruitment as possible. You know, we revised the stipend program, we did a sign on bonus. So this right. is not, this, I just want to put that out and be clear, like this is something that- No, 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 I, I mean right. the, 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 the stipend program, it's a great program. I'm not saying that you're not doing anything. Right. I'm saying if people aren't coming to join, we're trying to keep the people that we have. Right. Experience. So you suspend the driver, you suspend the firefighter that could be getting the rig out. So. In the middle of the night, he can't come right. to a call, so that rig can't roll. 
Right. But again, the, no, nobody here wants any particular thing to happen. Nobody here asked for anything to be brought to us. Right. We didn't ask for a complaint to be verbally filed here tonight. This is part of the job. Right. Like, things come up in writing. That. So, so you you started out with why didn't the driver? Why didn't the the person do this? Why didn't the person do that? I'm try, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you out because you right. guys see, you guys know nothing about the fire side. But so so how so how would we get the answers to that? So if you actually look at the video and you say okay, if this guy's going to get in the truck, carrying his gear to work and fire, how's he gearing up? When are you supposed to have a seatbelt on? But again, you're asking questions of the incident, like why this, why that, why this? How do you get to the bottom of everything that we're asking you're asking? But not with, a, not with an attorney. I don't, you call up, we're not you bringing call up a, to ask somebody and you say, okay, let the GIF guy come out. We'll do an investigation and say, the GIF guy says, this is what you could do better. We, we, the borough sent it to the GIF guy and there was a lot of things written back. Okay, they definitely didn't write back, huh? He should have gone to the left. What a fool. Like, that's, that was not no. the response we got. Well, you're not going to get a response from Jeff like that. I, no, no but, but I'm telling you, like, you know, so now the borough has in writing that the insurance company mentioned a couple things like, oh, this, oh, that. Do, do, you, do you not concede that we have an obligation to, to look at it? I didn't at, say at, you didn't have an obligation. And that's where we're at, sir. That's it. That's, that's where we're all at. That's all I'm saying. Right. What? But, you know. Okay. I get it. Yes, but I want to come to the next meeting and find out if anybody's got the truth out there, how much it's going to cost for a paid fire department. Because I'll do research and I'll come back with my answer. Yes, yes, ma'am. Your name and Samantha address. Samantha Shasta, 109 Godwin Ave. Um, I'm Thank captain you. of company number four, and I was involved in the investigation of Ken Pressler. Um, I'd like to speak on behalf of the investigation committee. And also, before I even get into that, um, it is nerve-wracking being up here because it has been very um, vague with the rules and who they apply to and who they don't. Because getting up here means I might have a target on my back now. So I just want to clarify that for you all now. Um, when it comes to Ken Pressler, we read the statements. There were questions asked. No, we were unable to interview people. I would be happy to interview people. I would be happy to interview everybody. After reviewing the video, we saw that there wasn't a cause to believe that Mr. I'm so sorry, um, that Mr. Pressler did anything out of malice um, against Sean Bruce. Part of the problem with what's going on right now here between the council and the fire department is the council is doing what they're supposed to do. You want it investigated because you want to make sure that no future incidents happen where somebody gets hurt. Unfortunately, the fire department knows that this investigation wouldn't have happened if Rob Bruce liked Ken Pressler. That's part of the problem, is that if it were an individual that he liked driving the engine that day, this would not be an investigation. Um, People are left at the firehouse all the time. I can't tell you the amount of times I've been left at the firehouse. I've been running up to the truck to go to a call, completely missed. Sometimes, unfortunately, you don't see somebody, you don't hear somebody, you don't see somebody pull up. There's a multitude of various different things that could happen. When it comes to Sean Bruce possibly being injured, on top of the investigation, of the video, as well as the statements. Um, I did ask questions to anybody who could answer them. That was in the investigation committee. Um, and they were answered, as well as I did research into um, diesel fuel fume extrication systems and injuries and possible things that could happen if they're not maintained or if they fail. Not once did they say it could injure a firefighter or hurt them or kill them. It said if the system fails, somebody could unfortunately get cancer, and that's the point of the system, to extract the, the diesel fumes from the firehouse and hopefully assist us to, be con to continue to serve the town and stay healthy. None of this would be happening right now. We wouldn't all be here right now if it was an individual that Rob liked.
That's really what it comes down to. And I totally get and respect that you guys want it investigated further. I get it. You want to make sure a further incident doesn't happen. But I can guarantee you that's not the point in other people's minds. Thank you. May I, excuse me, may I ask you a question? One, I understand your nervousness up here because I don't like speaking in front of groups. So yeah. I appreciate your courage to come up here and speak. And I know that you're nervous, so I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah. Um, but quite a few people made some comments about the um, current status of the fire department. And some of the words used were like lack of morale, fear of retaliation, things like that. Correct. Now, on the boroughs level, we have an obligation, regardless of how we got the information, we got it and we have to do what we're yes. supposed to do. Um, my concern after it's all said and done, and maybe you guys can help answer that, is how do we, as a borough, as a department, as, as our volunteers, which are crucial to how our borough <coughs> runs, how do we get past um, these, these fears of retaliation, this, this lack of morale? What can we help you guys do to, to strengthen the morale within the department, to know that you're supported by the council in the town and you're appreciated by the residents. What can we do to show you guys that to kind of, you know, get over this hurdle once this whole thing is done? I think, I, and I don't think it's anything against the council. I think the part of the problem is what is presented to the council um, by the chief. Um, I think that's part of the problem. And another part of the problem is some things that I mean, personally, I've wanted to address, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but certain things that I've wanted to come and address, I can tell you for the past year and a half at a bare minimum, I've wanted to say something and I've been terrified to do so because I don't know what the retaliation would be. Can I, can I also say something, Mayor? Is it all right if I say something? Yes, please. I've been sitting here listening to like everyone else and it really, really saddens me because to me, you're all heroes, okay? You all risk your life every day for us. And it's sad that I'm hearing this as a councilwoman, all this stuff. Why wasn't, why couldn't someone come to us, okay? And say, we need a meeting. There's big problems in this, in this fire department because we're willing to try to sit down with anybody that wants to sit with us and help us. And, and I don't care if there's faces in the audience. No one has ever sent a letter to the mayor and council and said, we have a big problem. We'd like to sit with you. I have not read an email like that. Tyler? M Mrs. All the problems started when he was given that third year. The That's when everything started. Um, extra year. Yeah. Yes, of course. Two years ago, the ex-chiefs of this department came to the mayor and council, sat down with them and said, we have a problem. We attempted to meet with the fire chief as the head of the committee. Guess what? The chief abolished that ex-chiefs committee. So don't say we never came here to, to, to address problems. We all, all the ex-chiefs came, sat in that back room and told you there's a problem in the department. No one, the chief abolished the committee, so. But then did you ever, if that was so, and that you've never had a meeting where this was all cleared up, then it would be to revisit and come back to us. We're not mind readers of what's going on in your department. We're trying to help you, Ken. You can make faces. We're trying to help you. you know, We're not against you. And there, there's one more thing that really bothers me. How come I'm getting, I don't want to use the wrong words here, but there's been other, there's been sexual harassment charges against a fireman's son in this department that was never investigated. We didn't bring in outside investigators and all that. That, that just got swept under the rug. Thank you. Never heard about that. You would, you were finished here? Councilwoman Pellegrini, I'd like to address that. If you can I just, Wrap it up, please. Yes, because I just want to, yeah. When I say that I'm terrified to have a target on my back by speaking up, that's the only reason I haven't spoken up because I have wanted to speak up for a year and a half. Because anytime you try to address something with Mr. Bruce, if you disagree with him, um, he will come back at you with a vengeance and he will 
find a loophole or a way to make you frightened for whether it be suspension or anything else, I've been, I've been terrified to speak up and I've wanted to for a very long time. So this is taking a lot out of me. And like the nerves aren't so much speaking in front of you guys, it's I'm awaiting the target on my back as well. Thank you. Um, can I just say that you are welcome to send a message or an email or a phone call to anyone on the council whenever you're ready to, to voice your concerns and kind of get some of those feelings out that I think everyone up here is open to Thank having you. a conversation with you. So I want to offer you that. Thank you. Um, and just to make it clear, um, Mr. Bruce's family and my family have known each other for a very long time and we're very close for a long time. And the fact that this has come between like a family lifelong friendship really sucks. I mean, that has nothing to do with this, but I just want to make it clear that this has nothing to do with dislike for the man. Yes. Next, I remind you, please uh, keep it to 10 minutes. Good evening, Mike Jones, 594 Boulevard, Mola Boulevard, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, to hit a couple of points, Recruitment, I've handed in many applications, same time as other companies. My applications seem to get lost. So my recruitment, I've had people leave saying to me, well, if this is happening now, what's gonna happen later? What's gonna happen when I get on? All right, I've had two good people that'd be great for my company walk away. Um, Ronnie Pressler brought up about my lieutenant having an incident. He had an incident. He took care of everything right away. He was put on administrative leave by what I was told by your orders. And then all of a sudden was suspended with no representation from a company officer. It was chief from the other company, no representation from any officer from his own company. I can speak up because I've already been a target of his retaliation. I held the position of first battalion chief. Mr. Mayor, I had the honor of you swearing me in. He found everything he can use against me to try to force me out. I was told if I ran for another year, he would find a way to get me kicked off and embarrass me. So I stepped down. I, I now hold the rank of captain. I've tried to, to your point of why I haven't spoken up further, because I'm trying to keep my members in my firehouse. They're sitting there, I'm sick and tired, I don't need this, I have too much other stuff going on, and I gotta try to keep them in. All right, um, I don't know what else to say, so I thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. Good evening all, Tyler Lewinsky. I'm a borough employee and also a member of Downwind Park Fire Department. I currently live at 281 4th Street, Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Mayor and Council, before I begin, thank you for giving me the time and opportunity to, to speak to you all. I'm coming on my 13th year with the Downwind Park Fire Department. I started out as a junior firefighter at the age of 16 and currently have been the captain of Company 1 for the last six years. Also in August of 2023, I was hired by the Bergen County Fire Academy, one of the most respected fire academies in the state of New Jersey as an instructor. In my spare time, I continue to take training classes. I also read about and study building construction and fire behavior, which are two major contributing factors to firefighter death or injury. I'm here to talk about what has been happening within the fire department the past year, and particularly what has happened to me as a result of events which occurred during the past year. As you may know, the town is elected to proceed with the fire board hearing. This hearing was in no way required and any issue could and should have been handled at the department level as is the past practice, but this particularly true, but this is particularly true given the disagreement. It is alleged that I continued to seek an inquiry into a series of text messages which disparaged me and failed to de-escalate de the situation. No fire board hearing was conducted by the town against such a member, only me. And as a result, you should ask yourselves, why are we doing this, especially on the municipal side, as opposed to letting the fire department handle the matter? I believe some background information is important. In November's 2022 company meeting, an election was held 
the current chief of department and myself were candidates against each other as to who will represent the company as a chief officer for the year of 2023. I won the election with a 10 to 3 vote. In reality, the chief was ineligible to run at the time considering the chief was finishing his two-year term. As per Burr ordinance, he cannot run again for the third year as chief of department. This ordinance was amended in 2023 for reasons unknown to me, which permitted a third term, but well after the election. During the December 2022 meeting, the current chief stated he wanted to remain chief and quoted, this is what's best for the fire department. The chief was then nominated on the floor despite the vote and despite the ordinance. Concerns were expressed by Lieutenant Kocek, as well as other ex-chiefs from the department, because this was against the borough ordinance. All three current chiefs were renominated for their current positions, and I was then nominated for the fourth chief's position. Members from the department stood up and expressed their concerns, saying this is going against the fire department ordinance, and nowhere does it say that you could have two chiefs out of one company, let alone a three-year term for the chief position. Because the chief got elected for a third year, this caused the department president to resign from his position, the department treasurer to resign, as well as the company one's officers for the year of 2023 to resign from their positions because of the chief not following fire department ordinances and the chief picking and choosing what he wants to follow when it will benefit him. Unfortunately, I believe the town was given misinformation or a lack of, of information about these events when it amended the ordinance. During this time, March of 2023, and despite what happened, I believe it would be best not only for the members of the company and or the department, but also best for the residents of this town to continue as captain. I, I again remind this counselor that I am a volunteer and I love this community. I spend my free time making sure it is safe. During the summer of 2023, the fire department experienced a series of issues between members. On June 5th at 11.49 a.m., the chief sent a text message to all chiefs and captains, excluding myself, since we spoke earlier on the phone expressing that he expected everyone to act professionally and respectfully. The chief stated a general statement, everyone please keep your comments to yourself. If anyone has a problem with anyone or something, please send an email to Steve and I and we will send it up the chain if we cannot handle it. As captain, I sent a similar message and he used it as an example. The chief also followed up with regards of what they are about, other departments, FD people, PD, et cetera. This is a general statement that speaking disparaging of members or other groups will not be tolerated. On July 23rd, 2023, I attended our monthly chief's meeting, held that company to. During the chief's report, the chief stated that all members of all ranks must be treated with respect within this department. On August 11th, I was approached by a new member who was in the process of joining company one. He had only been accepted by the company and not by the mayor and council as of yet. He then showed me a conversation between him and another member from another company in town on a social media platform called Snapchat. The messages from the other member were, were the following. Did you actually join company one in EP? Response, yeah. Oh boy, I don't want to be a pain, but they're all jerk offs over there trying to screw the department. Tyler and Steve pair are the biggest ones because this. Response, rarely. Yeah, basically Tyler and Steve want Rob and Eddie out as chiefs so that they can be permanent chiefs, so they screwed the entire department. Response, damn. Yeah, so just be careful. Sorry to rain on your parade about it. This prompt my new member, who was in the process of joining, to question me and call second thoughts about joining this department, where all members are needed due to limited manpower throughout the day and night. Not only did this member from the department say this stuff about Steve and myself, but also about members that have 130 years of service and experience to this town and the residents of Elm Park that were just given awards from the mayor and council and other committees. I then took a picture of the conversation with my phone. I reached out to the chief in that company chat and asked him the following. Rob, quick question. Didn't you have the officers put out to the members to tell everyone to keep their comments to themselves about each other throughout the department? The chief responded with, that is correct. The picture was then sent to the chat with, with the member's name blacked out. Less than five minutes, I received a phone call from the chief asking who said those comments about Steve, the company, and myself. I told them who it was and asked the chief if I would be able to handle it, that I would like the chiefs to not get involved. He, the chief, agreed with me and gave me the okay to handle the problem. He also told me to include his captain, which I agreed with him. All we wanted was to just speak with the member and his officers and for no disciplinary actions against him. I advised everyone in the company chat that Rob approved of me handling the situation and received phone calls from members that they were happy with me handling it. About a week goes by, and I decide to reach out to the chief to confirm that Lieutenant Kochuk and I were going to be handling the investigation with the officers from that member's company, and at that point he told me that we are not anymore and that the assistant chief will be handling it. September 9, 2023, 11.58 a.m., Lieutenant Kochuk and I sent an application requesting the disciplinary board to the department secretary to review the member who made such allegations about Company 1 Steve and myself, and to also investigate the assistant chief due to this being a conflict of interest and nepotism. 
At 1.33 p.m., Steve and I received a text from the assistant chief saying that the so-called investigation has been handled and closed. Let it be known, it took the assistant chief 29 days to investigate a matter where we had written documentation. Lieutenant Kochek and I both texted the assistant chief asking what the outcome was and who was on the investigation committee. As past practice, there's also three to five officers involved with the investigation to prevent any nepotism, conflict of interest, and to make sure there was no abuse of power. Little did I know the following day I was the next victim of being personally attacked. September 10th, 2023 at 9 a.m., I received a call from the assistant chief requesting to meet him as soon as possible for a meeting. We were able to meet at 9.45 a.m. at truck four. I met with the assistant chief and the battalion chief. I do have a recording of how this meeting went. It's a good recording of how the assistant chief conducts himself. I was placed on fire medic leave effective immediately, prevented me from responding to all fire calls, no drills, no meetings, with no charges given because the assistant chief refused to tell me my charges. No such action was taken against the other member. During that meeting, I requested a disciplinary board hearing and was denied on the spot and that I will be going in front of a fire board, which involves the town. It should be noted that past practice used in investigation of line officers was disciplinary board hearings, with one occurring in April of 2023 in which I sat on the disciplinary board. Nowhere in any bylaws, borough ordinances, or fire department standard operating guidelines do we have fire medic leave other than myself requesting leave from fire medic duties, which I did not. On September 11th, I met with the borough administrator and expressed my concerns. The borough administrator advised me to send an email to the assistant chief requesting my charges because he legally has to give me my charges to now build a defense case. The borough administrator also advised me that the town will not be getting involved and that the fire department heads need to handle the problems in house and to stop running to the town. Little did I know again, this is not what is currently happening. September 12, 2023 at 1.34 p.m. I received an email from the assistant chief with my charges. I was now placed on administrative leave for my original firematic leave from firematic duties. The following charges I received were neglect of duty, conduct unbecoming of an officer in the Animal Park Fire Department, and lastly, insubordination with a brief description of each charge. It has been 88 days since I was advised on, on fire medic leave and still have not had a fire board. I have been retaliated against, suspended without basis, and I am forced to come before you all. Mayor and Council, I ask you to do a thorough investigation into the policy and procedures followed in the investigation into me as I feel I was targeted and retaliated against by the Assistant Chief and the Borough. It's never too late to do the right thing. Furthermore, I ask for this investigation to see if any borough ordinances, bylaws, and policies were violated, more specifically, the whistleblower policy. I am, re I am requesting that you look into why I was not given a, dis a department disciplinary board hearing as that was the, was the past practice when line officers were being investigated for similar charges, neglect of duty. If it is founded that the jurisdiction shall still be a fire board, I request the main council immediately step in and make sure past practice is followed and my fire board has seven members, with three members from the Public Safety Committee and four members from the fire department, more specifically ex-chiefs. It should be noted that my fire board hearing is scheduled for December 11, 2023, and a fire board of four members. Three public safety and one ex-chief is not a jury of my peers, unfortunately. Furthermore, I ask you to reinstate me immediately so that I can go back to my duties as a captain of the Elmwood Park Firemen and to do the job that I swore to do, provide life and safety to the members of this fire department as well as the residents in this town. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else care to speak? Steve Kochik, 14 Memorial Place, Lieutenant Company One. So I had a whole thing here that I was gonna read, but everybody else in the room is pretty much hit on everything. Um, I just wanna address a few different things. Uh, Councilwoman Pellegrin, you had a question before about why didn't anybody reach out? I did. Uh, Fire Commissioner Dan Golubak, I had reached out to you after this whole thing happened last year at the uh, department meeting. I uh, sent you a text message. Uh, you never responded back. Um, we ran into each other at an event right after the new year. Uh, you said you were busy, that you apologized, you didn't reach out to me, they'd give me a call next week, we can sit down and talk. I'm still waiting for a phone call. So if that all went down that way, I apologize, but I'm just gonna, refer back five years or four years when there was an issue with uh, another chief and like eight ex-chiefs like asked to sit with me and I made myself available like four times. So I'm not, I'm not, if that's what you're saying is, is true, that that's on me. But the last time there was an issue with the chief and people wanted to talk about it, I think I had like 50 plus conversations about it. So just, you're, you're not wrong, but I just, I do want to make that, that noted. You know, we've, we've gone through an entire year and, and, and what happened four years ago when there was issues, it didn't play out. And there was a lot of dialogue back then and let's just say it didn't get to this point. But 
I, I can see your point. So the reason I did try to reach out to you is because of what was going on with the ordinance, it was violating the ordinance. The reason I stepped down is because I can't stand behind something that the ordinance is going to be violated. Um, I did go back into an officer, same thing with Tyler. After the February meeting, we went back in, and correct me if I'm wrong, March? March. March. Uh, the ex-chiefs of the company, senior members, sat down with us, asked us to come back in because they wanted leadership of the company. The only reason we did is because the ordinance was changed, and the fire department was no longer in violation of that ordinance. Councilman Danis, you had asked before, how can you fix stuff? A um, little bit of my history, uh, 20 years in the fire service, 10 years as a career fireman, 20 years as a volunteer, also got 10 years part-time, specialized fire in Morristown Airport. When I got hired out in Morristown Airport, it's one firefighter to a shift. Uh, I was going to read a small excerpt from there, uh, and hopefully this will kind of go to where you were looking for before. Uh, Earlier as mentioned, I worked at Morristown Airport as a firefighter for 10 years. Working there was a little different, and there was only one firefighter to a shift, and the fire chief was a 9 to 5 Monday through Friday position with the majority of the time you were by yourself for all fire alarms, medical calls, and aircraft incidents with automatic mutual aid dispatched. After I was trained and passed my test uh, to work alone, the fire chief sat me down and told me something that I will never forget and live to by this day. He said, now that you're good to work alone, you'll be the incident commander on all calls when you're by yourself. You have to make decisions. Sometimes you, you may make the wrong decision. As long as you can justify the decision with a reasonable answer, even if I feel it's the wrong decision, I will always stand behind you. To this day as an officer, I live by this statement and feel that this is a sign of a good and true leader. Because of what's going on today, I have members that are afraid to come to calls, afraid to do anything. Why, you ask? Because they're afraid of exactly what everybody's been talking about, is this retaliation. That's a good leader. I don't feel that the fire chief, the assistant chief, is going to back their men. You need somebody to back their men. Tyler will back his guys. We got an ex chief over there that will back his guys, Mike Pressler. Another one over here, Nick Fedorson. Kenny? Mike in the back? Mike Cologne from Garfield? All these officers here back their guys. That's a true leader. Unfortunately, Rob hasn't done that. There's been a lot of retaliation. And there's a lot more that we can go on and on and on about. There's been a lot, and all I'm going to say is to the members that stand behind me in support, you know when the fire department management doesn't have your back, I do. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else care to speak? Michael? Mike Pressler, 134 Godwin Ave, Elmwood Park. Um, Mayor, we had a long conversation over the weekend. Um, we discussed policy and procedure. Um, I'm a firm believer that we follow the rules and we go with the rules and not go around people. And that's what I did just now. I thank you, Councilman Gullibeck, for the response today for my letter. I appreciate you reading that, and I hope you take that into consideration. Again, you've known me for many years. Many of the council members know me for many years. I was fire chief in 2015, 2016. I do things by the book. I always pride myself on that. All right. I found the fire department. I left it better than I found it, and that was always my, my goal. Whenever something came up, I try my damnedest to handle it internally because that's what you have in a department. People that are, make very balanced decisions, level decisions. Um, back at the last city manager, chief, unfortunately, I didn't get to work with you as city manager, but I maybe came to the town two or three times. Mayor Mola, God bless his soul, used to say, Mike, solve the problems in your firehouse. Don't come to the town. We don't need to get involved. We want, don't air your dirty laundry. Try to handle it internally. Count, uh, Mayor Coletti was my fire commissioner. We worked very diligently as my liaison, and I looked for him to advice, for advice. And again, I think maybe I had two issues I had to come to town with over a two-year term. Again, things were different back in 15 and 16. The world has changed, Councilman Goldbeck. You are correct. Liability is a terrible word. However, what I want to hit on is the fire service. Unfortunately, firemen are crazy, all right? We run in, you run out. We're a different breed. But there's one term that I want everybody to think about. It's called brotherhood, okay? You're my brother. On a fire scene, if I'm working a fire with you, I don't know who you are. You got a saddle rook shield in your helmet or a hoboken shield in your helmet. Hey, brother, what's going on? Hey, brother, move out of the way. Hey, sister, brother, whatever you want to say. I don't want, I want to you know, segregate. But however, that's how it works. We all have each other's back. 
Years ago, growing up in a firehouse, if we had a problem, you went in the back room, you took care of it. Yes, we can't do that nowadays, liability, right? Hazing, so on and so forth. You took care of it, all right? You, you duked it out, you screamed it out, the door would breathe, we shook hands, and we left this gentleman. And that was the end. No one went here, no one went there. Because you're brothers. Right now, since this November 6th incident, I'm very hesitant to respond to fire calls. Been a member for 28 years. My average is probably 78%. My response, I was devastated after November 7th. I missed my first night call since I broke my leg in 2017. And that shouldn't bother me. Since November 6th, stuff that I've seen my father going through and the rest of the members of the department, it's disgusting. I just don't know how to function. When the whistle blows, I don't want to go. And that's not me. Mayor, you were here on Sunday when they said, I guess I had no choice to join the fire service when I was born. You're 100% right, and I loved every minute of it. I even do it as a career. But I cannot fathom to the spot that we've gotten here. We've tried as ex-chiefs, we've tried as members to give advice. Rob followed me as I was his chief, he followed me. Give advice, give him pointers, give him lessons. He don't want to hear it, which is fine. He's the chief, that's fine. I respect that. I stand back and watch. That's why here it's very hard for me to come and complain because I don't like to air my, my issues. But again, brotherhood. We solve things in the firehouse, at your kitchen table. Okay, that's how it works. All this confidentiality, it's very cloak and dagger in a firehouse now. Don't say this, don't say that. Don't look at this guy, don't say that guy. This is this, this is that. They're gonna rice you, they're gonna do this. That's how the fire service works, I'm sorry. You could all disagree and say, oh, it's get, get with it like it's 2023. No, we're brothers. None of this cloak and dagger. I'm gonna trust you in my life. If I can't trust you here, I'm going down a hallway with you, and the fire's rolling over my head, and I turn around, you're gone. I can't trust you. You should be with me, even get burned to take me out of that building. That's how it works here. We don't leave people behind and we don't screw people over. So I'm taking a different approach in the whole thing. Remember the term brotherhood, but again, I understand policy and procedure, but at one point, the town has to get involved and see the common denominator here. And when every time the common denominator comes crying to the, to the, to the council, hey buddy, go solve your problems on your own and come back to us with real problems. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Anybody else? Nikki, sure, sure. Good evening. Nick Fedorson, 28 Maplewood Ave. I'm a 44-year member of this department. I was hoping to make 50. Maybe I'll make 45. I was going to leave because I don't need this bullshit. But you know what? Tyler and Steve and other ones asked me to stick around for their support, and I will give them my full support. I have never seen more people suspended in the last year in this department because of Mr. Bruce. And not even with doing an investigation, there was a road raid incident. Right away, you're suspended. And then all of a sudden, the next day, the kid, they lift it. Do your investigation. Uh, the member they were talking about Engine 3. The chief's job is suspended for one month. He's suspended for three months. This man thinks he could walk on water. And he has all the right because of his job. He said to me one time, I know it's hearsay, because it was, I met him at his firehouse. I was having, talking to somebody. If this department fails, it's because of Tyler and Steve. No, if this department fails, it's because of you. You know what, As if right now, if I could do a vote of no confidence against him and the incoming chief of Eddie Metzweski, I would do it, because I don't have confidence. My job is to worry about what's ahead of me, saving that lady from the window, saving that cat, saving that dog, whatever. I don't need to be looking behind my back to see if I'm gonna get suspended. It's, this is so wrong. I was, I've been on the bylaws committee since Ron Press was chief. That was right after dinosaurs, right? Yeah. And you're great, right, you can't cover everything like with this incident you can't cover everything in law if things happen then you got to take care of it i understand that but it this is just so wrong what's going on here that everybody's got to look behind them dolores camlet wanted the investigation board before we came to the mayor and council well at that time we had the fire board she wanted this way board so we handle i don't ever remember coming in front of you people maybe every now and then maybe it's because of a truck issue you want we want a new truck but you maybe wait a year not for problems like this. Like I said, if I could do it right now, I would take a no, vote of no comments against him and the assistant chief coming in, because something's going to happen. They're not going to straighten this stuff out. This train is off the rails, down the ditch, not coming up. Nobody here should be afraid to do their job, to run in and go do somebody, but worried about getting suspended? Come on. It's ridiculous. Thank you. 
Thank you, Nikki. Anyone else? Happy holidays, everybody. Um, my name is Tim West. I'm Tyler Wawinski's attorney from Wisdom Borgie. I, look, I, I just want to talk about the procedures. We, you've heard about the merits of this thing. Um, I, I think the council, you're going to deliberate, you're going to go back into a closed session. And, and I can tell you, I do a lot of this on the municipal side. We represent about 25 towns in Bergen County as their labor attorney. I've just gone through this with another municipality. Mayor, you indicated at the beginning of this that the uh, Borough of Elmwood Park is a family, and unfortunately what's happening right now from the fire department's perspective is the council is unwittingly acting to support the chief, right? This fire board that, that's going to occur on Monday, that's your choice. Let me, let me just explain the law with this. You contract with volunteer fire companies. They're their own entities. They have their own bylaws, just like the council has its own bylaws. Those bylaws have disciplinary processes. Most things are handled in-house, and we're talking about a series of text messages and what Tyler's being accused of, and he's been suspended for 88 days, 88 days without a hearing at this point. And, and, uh, Mr. West, I'm going to cut you off there because you know this hearing was scheduled for early October and it was adjourned at your request. Now, and it's eight, been 88 days. And, with, and who, who adjourned the October hearing? Since when do you suspend people without a hearing? I you suspend after the fact. And we can argue about that later, Mr. Trent. I'm not, I'm not going to talk to you about the merits. I'm talking about the fact that this has happened and this has consistently well, happened. Provide them with full information. Is that this, this was scheduled to be heard, and I think it was October 4th, and it was Again, I'll, I'll rest on my point that you do not suspend people without a hearing. There's been no suspension. There's been no suspension? He's been suspended for 88 days. It's not administrative what is administrative leave? leave? What, what is that? Administrative leave is this. Where is that in your code? You don't need it in the code. It's an inherent ability. For volunteers. And, and my point is this. You are going to have a problem. You do have a problem with volunteers. People that volunteer their time to go in and fight fires in your building that fear retaliation from the chief, okay? You should ask yourselves, when Tyler asked for an investigation, did you have a fire board hearing for that member? No, you didn't. Was it raised beyond the chief level? Of course it was. You're copied on, e Mr. Trent, you're copied on emails. It's very clear that the council has unwittingly, and, and I don't fault you, I believe you unwittingly have, have gone down this path of picking and choosing. Councilman Golubek, you talked about investigations. You were not consistently handling these things. Things that are handled in-house should be handled in-house, as they were handled before. And now you have a fire board hearing for someone that's blown the whistle and requested an investigation, and heavy-handedly, the council has exercised its own jurisdiction over a series of text messages. Think about that for a second. And, and, and what type of message does that send? The charges of insubordination. And, and for, for what? For, for not turning over a document? And I, Mr. Trent, we, we can go back and forth on the merits on Monday. I'm happy to do that. My point is this. Ahead of you, and just think about this, ahead of you is going to be a hearing. That hearing is going to be appealed to the mayor and council. From that hearing, you get to appeal the superior court. If we prevail on that hearing, you pay our attorney's fees. That's by statute, in addition to any potential litigation that could come. We do not want to do this. We don't want to be here doing this. But you're forcing our hand when you act in this manner and continue to go down a path where the council picks and chooses based on who they feel like having hearings for and who they don't. My point is, on Monday, I ask you all to go back to closed session, talk to your labor attorney. There's two of them here. They're very competent. Mr. Trent's been nothing but professional during this. Uh, obviously, we have a disagreement on the merits of this thing. But this is not a path that I think you want to go down. It's within your control to call this off. It's within your control to send this back to the department to handle this in-house. And whatever happens in-house, ha happens in-house. But my point is, if this hearing happens on Monday, you are setting into motion a series of things that will not be able to get undone. And Mr. Lewinsky will have to defend himself. So I thank you for your time. That's all I want to say tonight. And, and I apologize for, for the lateness of this meeting, but thank you again. I, I just want to respond just to, just to one piece of your comment, sir. Sure. Um, something about unwittingly, whatever being, and, and I just want to make extraordinary clear from myself, and probably others would agree, that the council members, the fire board, the public fire public safety committee is not interested in the politics and personalities of the fire department at large. This is not a subject that I, I, I spend a lot of my day. I'm just, I'm, I'm being very clear with you because you made certain insinuations about. I, I sure did. Pre, why, why are you having this fire board hearing the, for Mr. Lewinsky no, no, I'm, but I'm for just, nobody else? I'm just, I'm, 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 I just ask you that. You made your what point. What is different about this circumstance? You made your point. I'm not, I'm not getting into Q&A, but I, I just, I want to make my point that I, I, I resent an insinuation that there's like a, a personal angle from anyone here or any kind of prejudgment, okay? Being in this position is a great job. Sometimes there's tough situations to deal with, and that's all I can say to that matter, sir. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll rest on that. I, I don't, this does not have to happen. And it, I think, I believe it's clear why it's happening. It's clear why this is happening. Anyone else from the public here to speak? 
If not, I will close the public portion. We're done. I need a motion to adjourn. No. Executive. No? executive? So motion to go into executive. All in favor?